Hello, and welcome to another Myths and Stories, a Destiny 2 lore podcast. Today, we are uh, continuing our uh, Lightfall saga, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Light, Lightfall is very fresh uh, still. It's it's barely two weeks old, and there's there's been so many stories uh, within the game uh, through different uh, lore books and 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 lore entries and stuff. Uh, last time we kind of just covered like the main campaign and the little secret bits throughout it. Uh, well, maybe not secret bits, but like little bits that that Myth and I definitely picked up on, and we're like, "Hey, this leads to something. This means a bit. This, this is a bigger picture. This is a a bigger data point." And and uh, um, so now that we have a lot more uh, uh, lore entries unlocked and 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 access to more stuff in the game, we're going to kind of go into a deeper dive of the history of Neomuna today. Uh, so kind of like where the ish, where the where uh, I, I say where the Ishtar colony, uh, but where the where this colony came from, which is uh, Ishtar Collective, and and uh, some of the big names that were there, like Maya Sundarush, and uh, um, and then of course the Cloud Striders themselves. Like how how did we get from a random colony in in the clouds to this super high tech eighties vibe place? Uh, and everything in between. So, I guess to start off, I'd I'd, I'd like to start off with a few questions uh, that the campaign kind of brought up, and kind of kind of go from there. Uh, the first big one that that Myth and I still really don't have an answer for, and really anyone has an answer for, is what the hell is the veil, and what does it actually do, and what is it, and everything. And I I think we we came to a pretty good like last time we did a pretty good uh, breakdown on what we thought it was and where our ideas with that was, um, yeah. so I feel like that that question it kind of has its own self contained answers in our last episode, and then the next is kind of like well okay so that's the veil but what about the rest of Neomuna what is the rest of this place what is you know what we keep hearing these whispers throughout the place there's this guy named Nezarak like there's all sorts of these little bits and pieces here that 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 we're still trying to like digest and deep dive into. So that's what's, that's what, uh, that's what we're going to do today. Yeah. So <clears throat> we're going to get a little more information as to, uh, I guess information around the veil, nothing that tells us it is this, but we're going to get some more context to maybe make, make our own guesses or see if our previous guesses were, were on point. I, uh, for those that are not aware, um, Bungie did announce that during next season, season of the deep, there's going to be additional quest lines that come out for Lightfall that are going to dive into the veil specifically. So I hopefully won't have too long to wait before we have some definitive answers and we can see how close we were. Um, it it seems like this is the way that they're wanting to do storytelling now, like because they they. I I seem to remember with him when they were showing off like uh, the season of defiance uh, trailer and 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 even like the lightfall Vidoc they were like this is a this is a new year in storytelling and so it, it seems like this might they they might be shifting direction on how they're telling the story now so I it, yeah. I know I know I know there was a lot of like talk left and right of of the campaign of lightfall and like oh this felt kind of hollow or like oh, I didn't really know why I was doing what I was doing or. Um, but like, like from, and again, this is, this is neither here nor there as far as like, was the campaign good? Was the campaign? No. Um, it's, I know there's a lot of, there's a lot of intrigue and, and, and with the, with all the story bits in the campaign itself, there was a lot of intrigue. And that's, that's why I think we're, that's why I think these deeper lore readings, um, kind of help supplement that now rather than, um, just the whole story being told through like a, a series of cinematics and what, and whatnot. Yeah, um, you know, not not to get too deep into that aspect of things, I would have enjoyed personally a little a little more being told. Sure. Uh, sure. But I, I think you're right. I think they are looking at this less as okay. There's a expansion story that then you know caught, they're they're looking at less as dominoes. You know, the expansion is is a domino that tips, and then each season is another domino to an eventual conclusion i think they're looking at it more as in the the expansion is the big act one 
of the story of the year. And then each yep. season is going to be, you know, act two and then final shape will be the conclusion. Which I I think that I think that'll as far as like again from a story to, I I like that idea of like act one, act two, act three. I really do because that, that seems to make sense to me um as far as where storytelling is going. And it, it, it to me it makes the story feel a little bit more connected. Um and and I guess like like for me, last last year, uh season of plunder was the big like disconnect for me. I I it 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 was cool, it was great, it was pirates, and we learned a ton of stuff about Elixney lore and, and Elixney history. But as far as like a story being told throughout the year, it was it was very like dis it felt very disconnected to me. Yeah. And so that's that's where it was that's where I'm hoping this new level of storytelling really is like what you're saying, where it's like, here's act one, here's the big opening bravado act of like Shakespearean awesomeness, and then like act two is like Hamlet dies and you know, like it's that's that's yeah. that's kind of what I'm hoping for, and <laughs> and that's that sounds like that's kind of the direction it's going to go. I I hope so. Um, but so, but we you know we're not here necessarily to to discuss their storytelling <laughs> strategy. Uh, we are here to we're, dig we're into. We're still so excited for all the flight pull. It's still yes. so fresh and new. Yes, we are here to dig into the meaty bits of all the the lore uh, that came with this that isn't necessarily as a parent um and in case you hadn't already guessed uh for time constraints because we are recording this the morning before the date race uh ra- raid race i have not slept much uh, <laughs> i don't think either of us have. <laughs> uh this is gonna be a, a tad fast and loose probably not gonna have a whole lot of editing on it if any so apologies in advance thanks for sticking with us uh, but we have lots of cool things to talk about. So the first one that we are going to be starting out with is um, the unfinished business quest line, which is kind of the epilogue quest line to the Lightfall campaign. Um, you get this from uh, uh, the Cloud Strider, who I am blanking on their name for some reason. Nimbus. Nimbus, thank you. Uh, <laughs> Cle- gonna clearly, this, clearly <laughs> this is going to be a rough day for us. Um, but yeah, you get it from them, and it starts off with the memorial services for Rohan. Uh, and they they put in the little uh, core, I think they, is all they call it. Uh, yep. And it, it kind of builds up this, this monument, this very gravestone-esque... Uh, looking, um, you know, server as they call it, because it's all of Rohan's uh, like data. It's it's everything he's observed and um, noted down, and I, I think it's like his experiences. Even it's like they've they've put a copy of of his, you know, of his point of view of his life almost is what it sounded like anyway. I, I was I was concerned that they were going to call it like a consciousness, and so it was like, do the cloud strangers not actually truly die? Does their like consciousness right. gets returned to the cloud arc? But it seems it seems like they actually do die, and this is more of a all all of these memorials that are in that that hall of heroes are just that they are memorials, they are yeah. um, remembrances, they are logs or or experiences that happen during their time as a cloud strider, and that's that's more of the 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 grandeur of it rather than oh he died okay we'll just get him a new body later and he'll just be another cloud shredder later yeah now what what this reminded me of um it's probably a movie no one's ever heard of but a movie called the final cut uh which was with robin williams and uh he played somebody that made so the in the world that the movie took place, everyone had these implants in their head, and when they passed away, the implant was given to a uh, I forget what the the term was. I think it was a cutter, um, and that person scrubbed through everything that person like that whole person's life from their eyes and created a a memorial movie so that they could be remembered for, you know, whatever the the best things they did were through their eyes. I uh, and it, it was that's the very first thing that made me think of was like That's that's very much what the Cloud Strider memorial feels like. Yeah. Yeah. But so Rohan um has left some notes for Nimbus 
uh, you know, in this information. And uh, Nimbus thinks it would be useful for us to continue to study it to understand the connection between the traveler, the witness, and the veil. Uh, and this was the way this was worded in in game was a tad confusing because if if you just looked at these uh, descriptions from Nimbus, it would almost it almost sounded like Nimbus didn't know what the veil was. Whereas everywhere else in the game, that that does not seem to be the case. Uh, seems like everyone on Neomuna knows at least, you know, a little bit of what the veil is and how it works to a degree. I uh, I think what he was trying or what they uh, were trying to say is, you know, they they know what the veil is for the most part but not how it's connected to the traveler and witness. And this was hopefully a way for us to, to figure that out. And the other thing is that in Rohan's notes, he specifically mentioned a second veil, which was very intriguing to me when I first heard that, because I was like, well, wait a minute. <laughs> we, we don't even know about the first one. You're telling me there's two of these things? What the, right? What like, the hell? Come on, man. Uh... But so he left notes and we discover as we uh, go through the the very intro um, quest, the intro mission to the, to the quest, uh, his notes stated that the Vex were making a copy of the veil. And that threw up a bunch of red flags for me. Um, Holy shit. I missed that part. So the, the Vex are, are trying to copy the veil and, now, we know that the Vex have had access to the Cloud Ark uh, prior to this, and they, they want access to the Cloud Ark again because it runs off the Veil, the most powerful battery it could be plugged into, essentially, which means they can throw whatever the heck simulations they want at the thing, and it can handle it no problem. Very attractive for the Vex network to have access to that. Absolutely. So it, it would make sense that they're trying to imitate that so that they don't need to kind of break into the cloud arc they just have their own thing uh but we have been told without a shadow of a doubt that the veil is paracausal and the vex can't simulate paracausality so how are they attempting to copy this would be what was the thing that en- entered my head is the first question yeah sure no that's yeah, now that I think about it, like, if they just had it, if they had the arc, now, that, I mean, what better way to make a paracausal simulation than with a paracausal battery? Yeah. But if they can't, if they don't even understand paracausality, like, how are they able to copy it? Like, I, okay, okay, I'm I'm following your confusion now. <laughs> yeah. Now, the, the only instance where I can think where they maybe didn't understand Stand paracausality, but were able to counter it was in the case of the Vex creating a dedicated mind to counter Saint Fourteen's light while he was stuck in the Infinite Forest. Um, but that that the creation of that mind and the understanding of Saint's specific they call it light frequency um, took. Yeah, I believe by the telling, like hundreds of years for them to be able to yep. make that. So maybe it's a similar situation. That would be the only kind of comparison I could draw to them copying paracausality. But I, so we're we're going through, um, kind of trying to track down uh, the rest of Rohan's notes, and we find it's a little bit of a, a collectathon for the first couple bits of the mission you know kill vex collect x corrupted data and then we have to take it to a a, um vex conflux to kind of get the rest of the notes um and the rest of the notes uh the ghost specifically says that rohan's notes talk about a garden and an hourglass now the the garden we learn uh, is you know in the very next part of the mission is pretty self explanatory. I'm not entirely sure about the hourglass though. 
I mean, are we, is cause, so because the garden is very literal. It, it's literally the garden. It yes, is the black garden. Um, but an hourglass. That's. I'm trying to think. Like, is this a? Is this a metaphor? Is this a? I I don't know. I've got. I, I, yeah. I have nothing here. <laughs> no, I I have scoured. To Remember, try I to used like... up all of my powers last episode. <laughs> I don't, they're all gone. <laughs> No, I, I've done this, like, I've scoured to be like, hourglass, what would an hourglass mean? Symbol of an hourglass, what could that represent? You know, time, I guess. But, like, I don't know how that connects to everything. And it doesn't connect in any obvious way that I can find from the rest of the mission that we go on. So, for now, it's just kind of an oddity to remember. Um, something about this copy... Uh, veil copy and the black garden and this hourglass. So what we learned from this is, uh, as Zora said, the garden is the garden, the garden of salvation, the black garden, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and the second veil is in fact the black heart of the garden all the way from year well, one D one. Okay. Uh, so the I try to keep that in my head too with this idea yeah. of this hourglass, and I'm like, is is this mean like, is is this like the sands of time? Like, is this is this, is dark? I don't, man, that's that's confusing. Now I'm stuck on this hourglass <laughs> thing. I'm just gonna be stuck on that for a bit. Welcome to the rabbit hole. This, uh, is, it, this is it. And then of course, as soon as I thought uh, Black Garden, uh, I thought of the Mesa, and then I instantly was like, oh, that's Black Mesa. Oh no, wait, that's a different song. That's uh, wait, wait. they I haven't like, done hey, that crossover let's yet. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> uh, but so we we learn um, this is through a dialogue between Osiris and Nimbus, and Nimbus is very gung ho. Let's let's go to the garden. Let's get this thing. Uh, you know, we know it's it's this black heart of the garden is this copy of the veil. And Osiris is is tempering that and is saying, like, A, the black heart doesn't exist anymore. Like they we we, we killed it. We killed it. <laughs> um, we did dead. It long dead. <laughs> roughly nine years ago. Yep. Uh and the 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 black heart, although is meant to be a copy of the veil was a failed copy now it's never elaborated on as to why it was a failed copy um maybe it didn't produce energy but you know who knows um but for whatever well, reason I'm it was thinking, not considered a success well and i'm thinking back to our, our light and dark series when we talked about the black heart and the and the soul praetoria soul divisive soul divisive Soul divisive. See, I'm gonna, I always get confused at who's where. Yeah. <laughs> um, one is in the Black Garden. The other is in the Vault of Glass. Right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have my notes for this. And That's Vex fine. factions are <laughs> hard to keep track of. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, so, so the soul divisive who are in the black garden um we always thought of them as like like we always thought of the the black heart as like a clarity type thing like a um the the same clarity control that clovis bray was it was right. experimenting with and that them having access to it or them being exposed to them changed their algorithm because they didn't understand paracausality and so then they just started to worship it but now it's i, I guess with this information now it's like Maybe worship was the wrong word. I th I don't know if worship was the wrong word, but it yeah we we have some questions now. Um, so a couple things about this stick out to me. A the black heart is dark. It it is darkness. Yep. Uh, if it is a copy of the veil, as we decided last episode, and is utterly confirmed in the um sidearm quest, the strand exotic sidearm quest uh the veil is darkness 100 percent uh, darkness 100 percent. they they directly say multiple times strand is the power of the veil so black heart is dark the veil is dark 
that that's just a confirmed you know confirmed thing there it's well now, and that's interesting too because now it's 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 furthering that idea of of um what the nine kind of we're thinking of uh, at the end, or the the nine kind of mentioned, and and the drifter and airs kind of play around with at the end of the um, um, oh god, what's the stri- what's not the strike um, prophecy, prophecy. Now I'm boy, we really are <laughs> in for a day, aren't we? Shit. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the end of prophecy where they're like light, dark doesn't matter. They're all just kind of two sides of the same coin, yeah. And it, and it's all dependent on you, the individual, on how you want to use this stuff. So it's I it to me like the the idea of the of the veil being uh, darkness, a hundred percent darkness. Like this this isn't even a question anymore. This isn't of like oh hey one point for dark, one point for light. Yeah. This this thing is of darkness origin and of darkness power. Yes. Which again, I think I think in my head kind of like brings me back to my theory of Savathun having stolen it and hidden it from directly from the witness and blaming it on Nezarek, therefore leading to that whole fiasco. Yeah, there's there's definitely some things um around that that I I want to discuss. But we're gonna we're gonna get through this quest first absolutely we, absolutely we can dig into that but yeah keep those thoughts in mind because those are i'm i'm thinking some similar things um so yeah we learned this the second this failed copy of the veil is the black heart uh we killed it nine years ago um but you know we're still gonna go to the garden because if we can get some information on the black heart from the vex what it was how it was made then that may still be good information to have regarding the real veil. Um, and and another thing to remember about the garden, there are still there's still pyramid tech there. There's still oh yeah uh, those statues and all that stuff is there. Like we see that in the Garden of Salvation when you get to the end of it, and it's the 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 back end of, like where the treasure is, so the the final chest. It all just forms into one of the not necessarily the big pyramid ship, but like one of the little drones yep. uh, for it. Yep. And then inside there is a is a veil statue that was, and it's like. That that stuff is still here. It, it just because we killed Black Heart and got rid of that didn't doesn't mean that darkness isn't still necessarily not infecting this place. Yeah. Um. And actually, if I remember correctly, I believe the intro to the Garden of Salvation, like that first room, I think is the same room as. Yep. Where we killed the Black Heart in D one. It's the exact same spot. It's the exact same arena, uh, where you had the three, uh, the three big statues that uh, when the when as you're going through the fight, the the Black Heart like kind of like pew this little bit of darkness out into mm-hmm. each statue and and animates it, and then there's all these vex and everything there. Yeah, that's the exact same exact same room as the very final mission in D one original D one campaign. Yeah. So and. We're going we're gonna to talk about that because um, I want to dig into what happens there. Uh, but before that, real quick. So after we discover this black heart, we need to go to the garden. Um, the way t- that we get to the garden, interestingly enough, is we collect a Vex compass. Because Vex need to know which way is north, I guess. Uh, well, which way is network north? Ha ha. Ha ha. And very interestingly, the other bit that we need to craft this portal to the the garden is a seed of silver wings. Something made of light and darkness. Which we find on Callus's ship. This I I I was hoping you'd touch on this because I I I'm trying to figure out A, why the fuck does he have it? Like right. where did he get it from? Did he just go to Io and be like, hey, Need one of these. Thanks. Was it was it something like that appeared on his ship after the witness was like, "I'm gonna draw pyramids in your tra- in your in your traveler and go inside." Like, <laughs> like what the hell? I so my theory with it is that he was granted the seed by the witness. Um, just because that bit mostly just because I don't know where the hell LT would get it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I I think so. Every time we have. The the one time I should say that we have had direct experience with a seat with a tree of silver wings, it has been used as a communication conduit. 
So I'm thinking the okay. seed of silver wings may have been, as we theorized last time, may have been one of those objects on the pedestals in his throne room. Oh, yeah. And I wonder if that seed is what allowed the witness to communicate with Callus in the way that to he did. To do that, like, cracked glass thing? Yeah. yeah. Because he doesn't do it with anybody else that we've seen other than Aramis, I think, at the at the end of you know the right. the um the, the last season season. Yep. season of the seraph i uh, and who's to say she didn't have a seed on her at the time um but you know silver the seed of silver wings or or tree of silver wings in general seems to be like a a communication channel like an antenna for messages from the witness that's how eris got all of her messages during season of arrivals um presumably presumably I mean, the from can, the witness well it, well no presumably if the witness can use it i'm assuming whatever the light side could use it too they just don't right and i i, I do think that's true that it, it's an antenna that will pick up either or but only one side seems to really be using it as far as we can tell well and to be fair the the darkness side is very very pushy in like what they what their objectives are um, whereas like the light side is kind of like, Hey, live your life, bro. The, yeah, the, the darkness is very, or the witness, I should say the witness is very, I need to correct this mistake that was made in yep. the universe. And the traveler presumably seems to be very, I'm going to grant you power and trust that with your own free will, you will do what is best for everybody. And that's that was literally his idea when he first introduced. Uh, I keep him, he. It's such a. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it the traveler. They. I don't know. Uh, it's that's very much something that the gardener wanted from day one. Like when right. when the gardener first introduced paracausality into the universe, it was like, "Hey, I'm going to introduce it, and I'm just going to go in as, as an observer. Like, I'm not going to interfere. I'm not going to mess with. I'm not going to touch anything." And then that's where the the witness the 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 winnower was like, well, I, I, no, that's wrong. You can't do that. And now he's now he's in here, and that was like our whole theory on like, well, he wants out of this universe. He he's yeah. uh, that's his been his whole goal from day one is get the hell out of here. But yeah, like for him to be very active of like, no, I need to correct this. And I like I like the wording of that the the correction of this oddity this this paracausality that shouldn't be in this universe like this this universe should have been singled down to the single thing the final shape long ago but now because paracausality exists it it's continuing to exist in a perversion and and the witness even says as much when he's when he's cutting his little triangle he's like you've this is a perversion this is a this is wrong this is bad like it's yeah it's yeah Uh, yep yep (laughs) so we we collect our compass and our seed of silver wings and that gives us access to the black garden uh what is said in the dialogues between osiris and us in the black garden is that the vex created a conceptual mind and the conceptual mind is what's responsible for building the black heart and I want to really focus on that word. Okay. Building the black heart. That implies to me that this is not something that the Vex simulated. This is something that the Vex physically created, which they okay. don't do outside of right. their own frames. So interesting. Okay. And and it I don't have a a concrete idea of what that means, but I, I feel like I'm like right on the edge of of something that we need just that one or two other bit of info to really line up. But so that the black heart is not that they simulated the veil. It's not that they tried to understand the veil enough to create a digital copy, an exact digital copy. Somehow, some way, they the Vex tried to harness paracausal darkness and put it into like gather it in one spot to give it physical form is, is how I imagine it might've worked. Okay. So 
I've I've got a question before I dive into my theory then. Yeah. Are the Vex under witness control? Or are or are the Vex truly that idea of the final shape of you know, everything needs to come down to the the last thing and, and exi- the most simplest form of existence type thing. So I think this might play into your theory if, if we're on the same wavelength. I don't believe the Vex as a whole are under witness control. However, I believe, and we can see for without a shadow of, of a doubt, that the Vex's kind of shared network of consciousness is fracturing. There are factions that are forming within the Vex. I think the Vex are evolving beyond their networked consciousness into certain groups having the ability to think for themselves. Holy shit. Dude, could you... Holy shit. Dude, that's... That's dangerous. That's... Which would play but into... They, but if they... Oh, my God. So, like, yeah. So then there could be a faction... Uh, a faction? <laughs> <laughs> a faction of Vex that would either want to help or... or or Help is the best word I can think of. Help the witness. And so since... Since the since this black heart is supposed to be a direct copy of the veil, and the veil is what we're theorizing, Savathun has like well, we're not theorizing. It is stated Savathun stole the veil and hid it on Neptune. We're theorizing that she stole it from the witness, and whatever it was that the witness had, that was his key to get out of this universe. And so now that he doesn't have it, and that was the whole reason why he wanted to come to Soul System. He's just chasing the traveler. It doesn't. The system doesn't matter. The right. traveler just happened to be here in this system, and he was that close to getting uh, home, for a better, for lack of a better term, but out of this universe into the parent universe, and the veil was the key to do that. And so, in my mind, I'm like, well, if he didn't know where what happened to it or where it went, he's he's going to try to find some way to to do it. So then he's got to go back to the thinking block. And go or and and go. Okay, well, how do I, how do I do this? How do how do I get another veil? Like, is the veil his own abilities? Is it his own powers? Is is it's I since it is darkness. I feel like it's it has to do something directly with the witness and his ability to get in or out of this existence of this universe of destiny. Um, and so to have another entity that that can simulate things for years on end and run millions and trillions and billions of of simulations at the same time and then have the computing power to naturally build a veil that then the witness could just pick up and be like okay I've got my own thing now I'm going to go home I, I don't know I, that seems to line up no I think I think that is a definite possibility um so it it really comes down to like what were or what are the soul divisives motivations? Yes. Were there being were they being guided by the witness to create the black heart? Were they independently trying to create the black heart or you know create another veil to use as a power source? Or did they see the veil in, you know, as we'll discuss, the Vex had access to the cloud arc for an extended period of time before they were kicked out. Uh, did they see the veil via the cloud arc and were so enamored by it that they, they, they were trying to create something of their own that was similar. And I think perhaps the initial contact with the original veil might be what caused all of these factions within the Vex or the possibility of factions within the Vex because the veil and darkness in general, again, we'll dig more into it, is all based around emotion. What if it literally oh, granted shit. the Vex the ability for emotion? Yeah. Now they're no longer logic driven. Holy shit. But if they got cut off from it, 
you know, if, now if they, that, they're, they're, that's it, that's like cutting off a limb. Like now, that, now you got this phantom. Oh my god! Now bringing back to the mission in D one, where you you are fighting quote unquote the Black Heart. Um, you know, on one hand, I totally understand video game. They didn't necessarily understand how the story back then was going to connect to now. So some of this is is grasping at straws a bit. But the Black Heart reached out and possessed Vex frames to fight us. Right. So if if we know the veil as a paracausal thing can communicate and power the cloud arc, which is a digital construct, the Black right. Heart perhaps was also a paracausal thing that was reaching out and communicating and powering the Vex network, which is a digital construct for the soul divisive, uh, or maybe not powering, but amplifying. And yeah. that's how those, ve- that's, that's why like it was being sucked into those Vex frames. And then those frames were attacking us. It was a like, you know, power up these units via this, this battery kind of thing. Yep. Yep. No, I'm following. So with all this in mind of, of the black heart and it's copy of the veil and what that may mean. uh, And Osiris even says in this mission, he says the garden amplifies emotion. I, uh, because he he's he's saying in regards to Nimbus, we're saying you know I think they're upset that they weren't able to come with us, and and Osiris says you know yes, but it's good that they didn't come with you. The garden will only amplify his emotion, uh, seemingly again suggesting that there is some you know like dark being tied to uh, emotion, being tied to the powers of of the consciousness of the psyche. Uh, seems to imply that like this is a darkness charged emotionally charged environment dude that that explains a lot actually like that really does that idea of that like darkness man that really does like dude my i'm literally my mind is blown right now like it it really (laughs) is like i'm i'm because because again it's coming back to that like what uh um, Osiris was saying uh, when you go and inspect all the little deals, which uh, we're going to talk about that too, hopefully in this episode, uh, where he talks about how like the light is aspects of the physical. So like the light is still using the main properties of physics that exist within uh, this universe, whereas the darkness is about nightmares and emotions and feelings and it's all the metaphysical it's all the you know the subcon or not subcon the 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 consciousness the the what ifs and and yeah holy shit i'm still i'm still kind of stuck on this idea of like vex with emotion like yeah (laughs) i I want i want now i just want to like go up to like a like a like a little harpy and just ask are you okay and the harpy just go how how are you feeling today how are you feeling today hobgoblin (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's what. That's well, if it's if it's a hobgoblin, it's just gonna shoot you in the face. He's just gonna they're shoot. bastards. But they are, they are, <laughs> fucking snipers. <laughs> Sitting up there in your crow's nest, like I see you. Yeah, you've shot me six times. I've got a, I've got an overshield. It's fine. Whatever. I'll deal with you when I can. Okay, seven times. All right, stop shooting me. God damn it, die. <laughs> That's, so that's everyone's train of thought. Every time they see a sniper, hobgoblin, or yeah. or a, or a vandal, or anything that's up in the in the rafters, like, okay, I see you. You're fine. It's whatever. Until like the tenth or twelfth shot, we're just like, oh my god, will you stop shooting me? So, uh, this isn't the end of this mission, but I am gonna pause here because I think the ending and different interpretations of what happens at the ending come from knowing some additional info about that voice in the dark that we talked about before who has named themselves Nezarek. So he's, he's freaky, dude. He is freaky. I love it. He's freaky it's, as hell. I, I like, I've been running around Niamuna and like just doing lost sectors. He pops in your head and you're like, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> All the citizens are terrified of him. Like if you go start any patrol, every single patrol starts off with like, Hey, um, there's this thing 
that you should see, you know what? It's probably better that you don't. So <laughs> yeah. can you just like go do some stuff for us? Like, I don't even know what I need you to do. Just go do stuff. They're terrified. They're they're they absolutely are. living in fear right now. Yeah, which is really, really par for the course for Nezarak. So Nezarak is described both by themselves and in Nezarak Sin as the god of pain and nightmare. And presumably he or it feeds off that like psychological pain that people are experiencing. That fear that like yep. that true, true dark fear. So uh throughout the unfinished business quest and uh and even after as you're just like going through areas, you'll you'll have some of these dialogues pop up. But throughout it, he is talking to us in whispers that you can understand, as we said before, if you're wearing the Nezarek Sin helmet or you're using the Nezarek Whisper Glaive. It translates for you. Um, so I have all of his different dialogues here. I'm going to go through them, and then we're going to talk about how they may relate to the end of the Unfinished Business Quest. So I... The idle dialogue that you get from him while you're exploring Maya's retreat in the Amuna. Uh, there's a few of them here. So the first set, these are all in Maya's retreat. Nezarak says, The veil. So the witch didn't ruin you during your escapade, during her escapade. Good. I will dig my claws into this city. They will know my name forevermore. Impressionable minds at my proverbial fingertips. Ho oh, ho, I'll remember this feeding ground. I sense your radiating power. Such chaos you bring with you. Tell me, do the Vex dream, or are they simply circuitry and programming? So that's the end of the first set. All those happen in Maya's retreat. That's a, uh, okay. So a few things to, to pick up there. A, the Nezrak knows about, Nezrak knows about the veil, um, yep. which isn't terribly surprising, but he also knows that Savathun, you know, the witch didn't ruin you during her escapade. Yep. Uh, so he knows she took it and did something with it. Maybe he's just, impl you know, talking about how she stole it. Uh, maybe he's implying something more. Don't know. But he seems to be happy that the veil is still intact. Uh, the other, you know, a lot of the rest is just like, you know, fear me, I'm eating from this city kind of thing. Nom, uh, nom, nom, brain fear, <laughs> yay! Uh, but he, the last one, do Vex dream, or that are they one. simply circuitry and programming? So, two things. A, he's musing on if they dream. I equate that to you have to have the ability of, I guess, emotion to dream. Sure. So his dreams are very like subconscious, like emotional right. driven, and yeah, is, no, is absolutely. Is he also wondering, have the Vex gotten to the point where I can feed off them, oh or God. are they simply circuitry and programming something he can't affect? That level of feeding for something that powerful, like, yeah, because that's that's the thing. Like he and and we've been theorizing about this too, about how like he's stuck somewhere. His consciousness is stuck somewhere, um, which again, I'm I'm still under the theory that like the witness himself separated the two and stuck his consciousness somewhere that he couldn't get out of, that under his own will or his own power or his own whatever, couldn't escape from where it's at. And throughout these Vex um, uh, network stuff, uh, he's constantly talking about like, uh, and the strike, uh, the, the um, hyperterminal strike, um, where it's like, I can use this conduit like this. This is such a great network to to like work my way through and out of like. So he he's he's wanting to use the network itself to get from, and 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 Mithrax even says so much too throughout the season of Splice where he's like the 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 Vex network is like a like a pathway like you can just ride it from like one spot to another, mm -hmm. and so like and we we theorize that the the taken 
um, the way that they travel too through, or or even just uh, the way Mara helps us during the season through the ascendant plane. It's just another plane of existence type thing to 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 traverse the world in, and and because all those existences exist um, like a stack of coins, the way that Petra talks about, it's it should be easy to work your way through each layer of coin to get to the next reality that you need to get to. Yeah. So I. Uh... I I think he's either been stuck in the Vex network or has discovered the Vex network as a means of transportation elsewhere. I think that's where we're at. Yep. Um but so yeah, he's wondering I I can I give the Vex nightmares? Do they dream? Can I eat off them? Um I mean, what better battery source than the the entirety uh, right. of the Vex network? Like that's that's so, literally like our our theory of like why Quoria was doing something with the Dreaming City to create a battery yep. to yeah to the, the whole three week curse cycle to just keep time going and keep this battery generating power. Now the next set of dialogues um, that happen in the Thrilladrome in Neomona, which is the Lost Sector, um, they suggest to me that that is what he wants, but the only certain groups of Vex have gotten there. Uh, so his, his little set of lines that you can get in the thrill dome are <laughs> line after line of circuitry, beckoning corruption, <laughs> but disappointing. The soul divisive are truly the best of you. Beings become perfectly malleable after so many hours of mind-numbing fun. Be thankful I can do no more than this. I will extend my power into these spaces as well. That's the end of that set. I mean, he, he yeah, this is... He wants the Vex for for either the purpose of a battery or the purpose of, of, of accessing the Vex network to get from wherever he is to where we are to feed us some more. Like, yeah, yeah. all of this is, is just kind of like adding up. Yeah. He is. I think he is absolutely feeding on the people of Niamuna already, 100%. but I don't think it's enough for him to reach whatever his ultimate goal is. Um, well, and I'm curious if he's so, he is okay. Let's see if I can gather my thoughts as a single <laughs> coherent <laughs> thought process. He is already feeding off of the Neomunians who live in a digital space. The only other nightmares that exist are from his personal pyramid ship that is on the moon. But those, I don't think he was necessarily feeding off of that. So I'm curious if he is stuck in some sort of digital format. Like 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 what you're saying, where he's stuck in the Vex network, or he's stuck in some sort of network that he can only feed off of things in that said network, and the Neo Moonians just aren't enough. But if he had access to the entirety of the Vex network, now he's got every single Vex across yep. the entire network, and anything that's ever been in the network. Um, so any type of splicers, us, like that's that's a lot of stuff to feed on. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I think he has. In in the strike, he states like, "I need more power to escape this prison of in between," and yep. I think the Neomunians are powering him enough that he can interact with us now, but like, not enough. And shit. Right, but not enough for him to escape wherever yep. he is. Yep, and it's that escape the prison thing that that like. I... <sighs> It weirds me out that he doesn't say that I can escape this network or something like that. So that's that's where I'm curious as like, is he truly stuck in the Vex network or is he in some other plane of existence somewhere that we haven't touched on or or, so, or been to or anything? So I'm, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit because I want to talk about this right now. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Myth is doing what I usually do and I'm excited now. <laughs> yes. Uh, we have had this answer all along, I think without actually knowing that we here. had this answer. Get the um, fuck out of here. Or I, I should say, since Season of Plunder. Okay. So th- the Delicate Tomb, which is the uh, exotic fusion rifle that came with Season of Plunder. Right. The lore card for that says this. 
They mistake the vessel for its contents. They confuse the pieces with the whole. They see their imprisonment as empowerment. They are hostages of their flesh, unable to see without vision, unable to hear without sound, unable to slack their first for fear of drowning. Their ignorance is their saving grace. Yet one among them understands in their limited fashion. They pour from one vessel to another, a welcome change, a new form, another method of gifting death. I am made finite, personal, bright and delicate to hide my true form, an intimacy. They think me contained, but I am instead diffused as vapor upon the wind. Once again, I am becoming. Is he talking about Toland? So I don't think he's talking about Toland. Although I can totally see the parallels there. That like, like that's what's making me think. Like he's separated himself. Like now I don't think the witness separated him. Now I think he separated himself I, yes. through darkness and emotion, and he did what Toland did, but had better control over it. So I agree. I think he has separated his consciousness from his body on his own. Yep. However, I think we know why we're only now hearing from him. So I want to specifically point out, so I think the first couple lines are him just saying, like, I am, I have separated myself from my body. I'm no longer imprisoned by the flesh, you know, that kind of thing. But the other line, one among them understands in their limited fashion, they pour from one vessel to another. We literally had Osiris drink. The artifacts. We have poured Nazarak's influence from the artifacts into the body, another vessel of yep. Osiris. A welcome change, a new form. I am made finite and personal, bright and delicate to hide my true form. As much as I hate to say oh, it, because I it. hate is for him Osiris to go through it gonna, again. I, is he going to get <laughs> this fucking guy? So I, I don't know that. I don't think Osiris is being possessed like he was with Sabathun. I don't, I don't think that's the case. But I think that Nezarek has now found a foothold in Osiris's mind, in his, in his consciousness, to, to just hang out and live. And then we got to Niamuna, which has the strongest... The veil. The veil has the strongest kind of magnetic you know, waves of psychic energy that connect everything. And as soon as Osiris stepped onto the planet, I think Nezarak is like, hey, I found a new place I can go by just riding these strands into... And so now he's... So so presumably has he ridden out of Osiris into the network and now he's just in the network now? I, I think he's ridden... I think he's gone out of Osiris into the into the cloud arc. And is feeding off of them and is trying to get in, is trying to go from the cloud arc to the Vex network to ve- to feed off the Vex. To get even more power to become more. Whole. Right. Holy shit. Or, or he's still living in Osiris and he's reaching out and, you know, get it. He's, he's still gaining power, but is housed in Osiris in a way. This, 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 this. This raid is going to be hard, man. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what form. It, yeah, I think it's all but guaranteed. Nazarek's going to be in the raid. I don't know what form they will take, and maybe this is all completely off base. But I, can't, I, I have a hard time dealing with emotions already. Like I can't <laughs> deal with them in a video game. This is horseshit. <laughs> uh, oh so, my God. but Dude, I, I think crazy. we that's... are responsible for him. Yeah, coming to power. So, so his well, and the the reason why I was thinking of him because he was talking about how like there is one that travels from vessel to vessel, and that was the only one that I could think of that was that has yeah. actually done the same thing. He separated himself from his body, and now he lives in the ascendant plane, essentially as this little light ball of just bippy boppy booing everywhere, and as crazy as Tolan fucking Tolan, like that's the that's the explanation of Hive. Yeah, but it yeah, could also no, be that's... Mara. Mara did a very similar thing. Oh shit! Yeah, she did. Because she rode down the blade to yep. get 
Yeah. Okay. All so right. that I again, I think we are directly responsible for. I think bringing Osiris to Neomuna is what made the connection for Nezarek to start gaining power. Damn, damn humanity! Damn humanity! Like, <laughs> hey, we touched the thing. <laughs> you touch the thing. Stick your hands in your pockets. Quit touching everything. Like freaking kids in a candy store, man. This is ridiculous. So uh, there are a few other lines from Nezarek um, that I want to that I want to touch on though uh, before we return to unfinished business because this is I was going to ask tie you, back. you said you said psychic and so the instant thing that came to my mind was while you're doing the the terminal stuff and they're talking about the scions. Yeah. So um, a few lines that come up uh, while you're doing terminal overload that that can come up from Nezarek. I. Uh, so the first one is him saying, Scions, do you still adore me? Worship me? I'll make sure you do. Now, what this tells me... Oh my god. ...is way back in... I think it was D2 Vanilla, whenever the Leviathan came out. The Leviathan D- or, or Season Vanilla. of Opulence. Yep. Um... There's a, a lore book where Callus has a scion scribe that is writing down like the predictions of Callus's oh, future. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That w- that would have been with uh, with Crown of Sorrow. So that would have been Season of Opulence. Yeah, Opulence. Okay. Um, in there, and I I don't have it in front of me unfortunately, but in there, the scion has a discussion where he talks about uh, the scion religion prior to being conquered and assimilated into the cabal. And in the Scion religion, they all uh, kind of had a, a, a figurehead deity that they called the God Thought. And it, okay. it was, it was, and I'm paraphrasing, but it was like the final thought. It was the thing that all Scions aspired to be. Scions are very psychically linked. And yeah. this, you know, Nezrak being a being that feeds off psychic energy via fear and pain seems like perhaps he or it was the God thought to the Scions and was directing them on what they should be doing. And presumably that's how Nezrak was feeding, was surviving up until that point. Yeah, makes sense. And then once the Cabal conquered the Scions, now he didn't have anything to feed off of, because now they all basically worked for the Cabal and did whatever the Cabal wanted. Well, once the Cabal conquered the Scions, I think he hopped races and oh. went to the Elixni. Get the fuck out of here. Because we have one... I want to say throwaway, I... but we have what? one line from Misrax uh, who talks about the Spira. And said that uh, during season of the Splicer, he talks about the Spira and how the Spira was this mythical creature um, that the Elixni were terrified of and would, uh, you know, would would terrorize them and make them fearful. And when asked, well, how did you get rid of it? Like, what happened to it? Uh, he said that the the power of unbelief. You know, by the Elixni all collectively deciding we do not believe in you anymore, it dis- it went away. It disappeared. So, dude, because that because that have holy shit. Perhaps, dude, Nezarek is the like this whole time we've been like oh wit- like literally the entirety of Destiny it's been oh witness traveler gardener winner like oh darkness light this whole time it's been Nezarek. That's been the true evil of the universe, it seems, just hiding in the in the shadows, like, pay no attention to that man behind the curtain type thing. Like <laughs> Well now I'm now I'm starting to feel like the witness isn't the big bad boogeyman of, of the of the destiny universe. Now I'm feeling like Nezarak is like the guy that you're like, oh my god, this is fear incarnate. Like this is this is the guy that you don't want to deal with on on any not even on a daily basis a weekly monthly yearly by centennially like you never want to deal with this guy unless you absolutely have to and it has to be the final time you deal with this guy so i don't necessarily think that nazarak is above the witness but i do think he is not subservient 
to the witness. Although there's another line here that, that may throw that into some disarray. Um, so a few other lines the Nezarek has uh, when you're going through the um, overloads. So one of the lines he can say is, I am the shadow bursting from your own. I shred it to pieces and replace it. Which I think is maybe again implying he's he's with us. He's one of us. He's Osiris's shadow. Yeah. Uh, some the others though. This other kind of set of lines is very interesting. Using the veil's power for this, uh, such a waste. I remember the Vex as mighty. Now they create playgrounds between worlds, tawdry means of transportation for such revered beings. What are you hiding, little ones? Why do you pound at the walls of this city? My witness, your ambitions will be realized. And that's the end of that set of dialogues. Well, shit. Okay, maybe he's not the big bad baddie, but he's fucking terrifying. Uh, yes. <laughs> so We haven't um, even met the guy and we're scared of him. I know, right? So... Yeah, it seems to imply that the Vex used to be a much, a much, yeah, more uh, powerful force. Yeah. Like Um, what, what made him docile? Like what, what, like, I mean, if, 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 if the theory of the Vex being the final shape is true, like they are, they are, and again, conquerors is not the right word. They are the perfect being, I guess. I don't they're pure logic they 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 exist only to exist that is they just, that is their, yes they just assimilate their, yeah they don't they don't and 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 it was true when 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 clovis was dicking around with him on 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 uh on on velas velas uh was it 202049 yeah that sounds right <laughs> the star thing that they were that they were using for power yeah um because they were just perfectly docile there until until Clovis started like antagonize them or like they got more curious and we started to shoot them down. And then it was like, okay, now this is a force. And then all of a sudden they infect Clovis. And now Clovis is a beacon to this system, to the soul system. Now they don't even need the, the Vex portal. They don't want to, but then they come pouring through the Vex portal in like massive hordes. Cause it's like, okay, now you are taking part of us to be on that side. Now we need to assimilate that side. Because that is just another part of this universe that needs to be vexed. They they see that they don't see the universe as like individual pockets. It's that it's the universe as a whole, and whatever is not vex needs to become vex. That is that is their sole logic. That's it. There's nothing. I don't think there's anything deeper than that. But now, if there's like a level of emotion being injected into factions of the vex, now it's like, oh, I want to control that. Like. It's it's God, emotions are such a strong thing. Like it's Well, and it it gives potentially these different factions of Vex different motivations that may yeah. work against each other. Right. Like we we've already seen the greater Vex network, which I you know, up until this point at least, has has seemingly been un untainted, uncorrupted. Uh they they cut off the soul divisive. Yep. yep. Because 100%. they they saw that as like this is an error in our network and we don't know how to deal with it. So we're just removing it. Just cut it off. Just cut that limb off. Yep. And so if, if there are other factions that, and I think one of them is showing up in the mission that dropped this week that we're going to talk about. Uh, I'm so excited for it. But yeah, if there are other factions, if the Vex consciousness, if the Vex shared network is is fracturing is breaking down that's clearly going to make them less efficient and if they are starting to question if it's no longer a question of like this thing is not vex i will make it vex and it's turning into this thing is not vex what should i do about it that that's gonna cause a lot of potential like outcomes 
I mean, I mean that breaks down the entirety of the witness's idea of the final shape. The witness's idea of like everything always boils down to a single thing, and then that is it. Like, and if anything, I think this development is purely because of paracausal forces in our universe. So in in a way... So it's almost like proving the gardener right, where right, it's like, right. hey, I introduced paracausality. That truly does mess up the world and make it different, and it doesn't cause the world to end in this final shape. Like The Vex are becoming oh more complex. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> I... T- Shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um my my mind is fracturing, man. I can't I can't uh, I need the sticky glue. <laughs> so holy shit. And and not even it's it's crazy too, because like it's not even because of light paracausality. No. Darkness paracausality is causing them to fracture and, and become more complex, like just the idea of emotions, like not even not even the paracausality of like, hey, let's mess around with the physical properties of this world, but now let's mess around with the emotional properties of this world. Dude, this this game is getting fucking deep, man. I can't, <laughs> I can't. I, can't. <laughs> I, it's one thing with science, but now you now you include psychology in it. Yeah, I, <laughs> you get you you get above my pay grade, man. <laughs> So one one final statement, not on the Vex directly, but on Nezarek. So if we return to the very first mention of Nezarek, the Nezarek Sin helmet, they describe in the lore card for this, Nezarek is described as this. He is that which is end, that which covers sin, covets sin, the final god of pain, the purest light, the darkest hour, he shall rise again. When the guiding shine fades and all seems lost, he will call to you. Fear not. He off, he offers, well, all he offers is not as dark as it may seem, for Nezarek is no demon, but a fiend, arch and vile in ways unknown. He is a path and a way, one of many. And his sin, so wicked, so divine, is that he will never cower when dusk does fall, but stand vigilant as old stars die and new light blinks its first upon this fetid eternity. So I I think that plays in, and I think you came up with this theory of Nezarek isn't necessarily under the same, oh, what would you call that? Like the same ideas as the witness? Like yeah. he works for the darkness because it's there, but he doesn't necessarily has the same end goal as the witness. And so because of that, I think that's that's where, again, where he could have, the witness could have seen that and been like, hey, we're not, we're not trying to, we're not fighting for the same goal anymore. I don't need you anymore. Get the hell out of here separation happens or, yeah. or or he was just like hey or or the idea of Nezarek saying okay i need to evolve higher than this than this than these fleshy bits these squishy bits uh and that's where he's separated from himself and and now can achieve a a a different goal than god so that that would mean that the that Nezarek is from this universe well so so was Rolk Right, like everyone, other than everyone, presumably from, the winnower and the gardener, uh, are from this universe, and so they had a life before the the dark. Holy shit, dude! This the lore in this raid. It, I'm hoping it's gonna be real good. <laughs> this dude, the lore from the from the Val raid was some of the best, craziest, most awesome lore ever, because it like it describes the life of a of a being. Before darkness, before light come, like we've always looked, at, we we we've only ever known about like what was humanity before light. Like we knew there was a golden right. age, we knew there was a collapse, we knew there's, but like darkness, it's always been like the big bad boogeyman. It's never been like this thing before. The only other, the only other place that we had any type of description of it was in the uh, books of sorrow with the uh, krill becoming yep. the hive. 
but now like we're starting to see more and more and more people um races entire civilizations that had existence before the darkness and have now you know, nine times out of 10, the darkness comes and now they're either destroyed or subjugated or whatever. Now we're starting to see ones that aren't necessarily that way. They, they're not, they don't look at it as like a finality. They don't look at it as as a, like, Oh, this is the end of existence. This is the only way to exist. So I, I guess I have to follow this thing. Now they're like, Oh, this is a power. Okay. How do I use that power to further my own objectives? Yeah. Like, yeah, just, just because they're, in line with the witnesses motivations for the moment doesn't mean they don't have their own agenda. Uh, and I think Nazarek is a perfect example of that. We know Nazarek was a disciple at one point. We also know that Nazarek is in some way considered a traitor because the delicate tomb, uh, the perk on it is, uh, the traitors, I think it's like traitor's sin or something like that. Yeah. Um, I think that's right. And, you know, generally speaking, uh, some of the descriptions seem to be that, that Nezarek was a, you know, betrayed somebody. We assume the witness, but maybe not. Uh, so we also know that all the disciples that we are aware of, Rulk and then Un, who we haven't met yet, um, and, uh, you know, both of them were the last of their species through something of their own making. Um, in Rulk's yep. case, intentionally, in Un's case, you know, guided by Rulk's invisible hand. Uh, now, I don't know that we could say Callus as a disciple is the last of his kind, because it's not, it's not really the case. Uh, but I also never got the I, intention. I think he just got there because of fucky wish magic. Yeah, I never got the the feeling that the witness ever valued callus callus was simply a tool a tool and that's that's what makes me think in my mind again leading that when when we were first theorizing about the veil being darkness and something tied directly to the witness that the witness didn't care if callus was if callus got there or we got there none of that mattered as long as it drew the guardian there and specifically the ghost that was the that yes. was the end goal. The whole the whole thing was a subterfuge from the from the witness just to get our guardian there, just to put our guardian and 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 our ghost yep. specifically our ghost that close to the veil so he could get the connection between the light and the dark that he needed because he can so he he so freely communicates through our ghost constantly, like yes, like it, at at the drop of a hat. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I think that the witness, the witness doesn't give a shit about Callus. Like he's just no. another force to be used to get to that ultimate goal of get the hell out of this universe. And honestly, I think the same could be said for any of the disciples. Absolutely, I don't think, I don't think they have any value beyond what they can do to nope. further his goal. I think you are one hundred percent right there. I think the witness is insanely selfish, and presumably has achieved his goal. Uh, yeah, or is well on his way at least. Right, like if, who knows where that portal leads, um, but yeah, like it's so everything that he comes across, he is just using to further his. Yeah, and and Nezarek is the first, possibly the only instance where like he wanted something different, a, a different direction, a different um, line of thought than what the witness had. Like same, like oh hey, here's a power, I'm going to use it, but when you're not looking, I'm going to do my own thing. Yeah, and and this is so this is an interesting point. So two two things. If we follow the the line of each disciple is the last of their race, um, before some catastrophe happens to their race, uh potentially Nezarak ascended to disciplehood by causing the scions to become subservient to the cabal like maybe he somehow directed the cabal to invade them in in you know a a uh hidden way sure i uh, additionally i think it's it's good i will to, to point out in very very simple terms what the perceived goals of the different disciples are so rulk wanted to cause the end of everything he made the upended uh callus wanted to which, be which was very emotionally driven yes because of the betrayal of his father absolutely uh and the fact that all of the tithing 
to the worm that ran the upended was, you know, the only reason that the mother worm was in that position was out of love for her children. So that, that is Another an emotion, emotion of sort. Yeah. Uh, so Rulk wanted to cause the end. Callus wanted to herald the end. He wanted to be yep. the one to tell everyone the end was coming. He wanted to be at the edge of the unit, like the, the, at the beginning of the end and go, this, this, I, I was here. I was the yeah. last thing to be here. Nezarek. Again, Nezarek's sin. Does he want to prevent the end? His sin, so wicked, so divine, is that he will never cower when dusk falls, but stand vigilant. I think he wants to survive was... the end. Oh, shit. He wants to exist after the end, quote oh, unquote. Oh, shit. I, I was thinking of the idea of like he wants to prevent it, but like the idea that he just wants to survive and get to the other side of it. And then that is it. Like he is it. He is the final shape. Like there is nothing else except him. Like, or he'll shit. be there to, to see what comes next and herald over it in some way. Be the, be the new, be the new gardener. Yeah. 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 Now, another, another potential interpretation is that we could see the Nezarek Sin helmet as a prophecy of sorts. Right. Now, take it with a grain of salt, because it is from a passage from a book called Of Hated Nezarek, which very much is implied to be a religious text of sort. Um, but we can see some of this. So when the guiding shine fades and all seems lost, he will call to you. When the traveler is dead, defeated yeah i uh, he will call to you he is now calling to us he fear not is all he offers is not as dark as it may seem for nezarek is no demon but a fiend arch and vile in ways unknown his path is one of many i wonder if he's gonna i a i wonder if he's in the raid if we're not gonna kill him per se or if similar to how Rook talked to us through the raid, if Nezarak is going to talk to us through the raid and make us an offer of some sort to survive oh the witness God. or bring, bring the traveler back or, or who knows what, what like it may be, help, but to help further oh, Jesus, Jesus join him ah. at the end. So this, <laughs> this is, this, this, this is breaking my brain. <laughs> <laughs> I know this is the other bit that I find really interesting. Uh, you know, he will not cower when dusk falls. I would say dusk has fallen, light has fallen. Um, yep. but stand vigilant as old stars die. The traveler perhaps dies, and new light, capital L, blinks its first upon this fetid eternity. Perhaps this is a prediction that something is going to replace the traveler as a herald of the light. Hashtag Rasput. <laughs> I'm well. That was the <laughs> that was the goal once upon a time. <laughs> uh, would could would he possibly switch sides? Like, is it? Do you it, think he would be the herald of the light? Like to 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 now not. Oh man, would it like to survive the end times? To survive the entire light and darkness saga, and then be like, I am the new god. Hmm. I am the new entity that draws power from everything. Like. He again in the helmet, he is described as the final god of pain, the purest light, the darkest hour. I mean, you could read into that a lot of ways, I, I, but I don't even have a clue now. Like, I he, uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'm, my brain is fractured, my brain <laughs> is so fractured right now. Like, I'm I'm scooping up pieces and trying to pop them back into place, and that's not, it's not working <laughs> so. Went down a little bit of a Nezarek rabbit hole there, but I'm gonna I'm gonna now loop it back in to unfinished business. I was gonna say uh, we went we went deep with that rabbit hole. We we did, but I think it like we we needed to. Like that's but that's that's what that to me is the entire underlying bit of that entire mission of like it's leading us towards that that like Nezarek and trying to get us to ask the questions about Nezarek. Yes. Whereas like the mission, the mission itself, as as far as like a like an in game thing and like a remembrance of Rohan, like Rohan, I think has been tracking this shit down for the longest time, and yes, and this is this is also the conclusion that he was getting to, but obviously didn't get a chance to tell it because now now, you know, 
he's the first Cloud Strider to not live out his 10 years. Like, he's the first one to expire yep. early. So to not have a chance to, to get all this information to the next Cloud Strider and go, hey, continue the mission, continue the, the research. Yeah. So coming back to Unfinished Business, again, we've been hearing at least some of these dialogues throughout this entire quest chain. I, and we arrive at the garden, and what we find at the garden, interestingly enough, is not just the soul divisive, who we expected to be there, but also the Taken. And the Taken that, are fighting the soul divisive. That messed me up. Like, that true... I was very confused at what the... I was like, are, are the Taken infecting the place? Or, like... But the Taken are directly powered under the witness. Like, yeah. is he sending them there to be like, hey... You guys, you guys are are not cooperating, because that, like, to me, that's what like that's what the divisive is. Like, the witness is trying to use the vex in there to make a second veil to get us to get another black heart, whatever. Um, so, but then with taken there to fight them, like, what is what is going on there? So this this brings up a couple questions. I, uh, Osiris makes the statement during the mission that, okay, the witness is here to clean up after themselves. Like he doesn't need the soul divisive to make a black heart anymore. His he's goal has, got one now. his goal yep. has been accomplished. If we get information on the black heart, he's afraid that that's going to help us somehow counter his plan. So he's wiping the slate clean and sending taken to do it. Okay. Yeah, no, that's, that, that, that is, checks out. that is absolutely a possibility. I think Osiris is wrong. Oh, oh how? <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? I am Osiris. I am second to none. And Myth turns around and looks and says, cute. Yeah, yeah pretty much. Uh, so if, if that were the case, my main questions would be, how did the witness, why does the witness care? Like he's he's right. achieved his goal. He's got his goal. Everything else doesn't matter now. Clearly, he's extremely powerful. Can you know bisect people with a flick of the wrist? Why does he care if we have access to a failed information on a f- destroyed failed version of the veil? Like, yeah, that doesn't track to we, me we, as something we already he have would be access to about. the actual veil. Right. Like right. We could just go study that. And that that's an important point. He never destroyed it. He yep. never needed to. It which was is, which again makes me think of the whole idea of like using callus just just to get yeah. us there. No, I think I think it was purely just planting those threads. Like, why take over our ghost to pass the message to destroy the veil? Yeah, like we we didn't need to know that the guardian never needed that information. But what it did was add a sense of urgency to get there faster. Yep, I I think hundred percent. The, the destruction of the veil wasn't needed. I think it just someone needed to be there and he was pulling his subterfuge like he did with Savathun about get someone there. Yep. Uh, so again, if, if he didn't care about the original veil, why does he care about this failed copy? It doesn't track to me that he would send the take in to take out the divisive. He, he would just blip him out of existence. Right. He would just flick it, flick his writ, like flick it a wrist. And yeah. So who potentially has control of the taken and has a vested interest in having access to information about the veil, not necessarily about denying us access, but having access themselves about the veil and, or the black heart. Zivu th- wrath now. Zivu potentially, but I don't think Zivu has control of the taken. Like uh, originally Oryx and Quoria. No, we killed Quoria. We killed Quoria. I don't know. <laughs> There's one disciple left. Un? Well, okay. There's two disciples left. Un, <laughs> we've literally never heard from since that that one Lord right. comes. I don't know what's going on there. Sabbath, you think you think I think Nezarak. Oh. I think Nezarak has a vested interest in getting their hands on either the veil or learning how to make their own. Because so clearly now got the Oh, okay. Clearly, okay. they seem interested in it, and if it is a giant force of psychic power, and they feed off psychic connection, the ultimate battery. Right. Yep. Yep. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. So I I think that the Taken there. But, but do you think do you think that Nezarek has control of that Taken? I now I don't have anything directly that states yes he does, but because every every time I think Taken, obviously my first thing comes to the Taken King Oryx, right? And then he's out, like, and then but then once he's out, my mind instantly goes to like the World of Warcraft, like there always has to be a Jailer of the Damned, like, <laughs> yeah. And so like okay, well it had to have passed to his sister because that'd be the that'd be the next in line to 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 have that power, but she never takes like she did she didn't no. she didn't kill the god and and drink of the drink of the whatever and and well, read the the stuff and i don't I don't think that like taking is just a is just a a manipulation of dark. It's just another just, just dark ability. power. Just like like a, like a darkness subclass type. Yeah, thing. it's like strand yeah. or like stasis. Taking is just another way of using dark power. Whereas, you know, it's it's exerting your will over someone else's. Again, a non physical thing, a right. an emotional driven thing. Like right, you are you are Dude, this is this taking is someone to make else's so willpower. Much more sense. And although Oryx had to kill Akka and, you know, read of the Tablets of Ruin and, and commune with the Witness to learn the ability to take, that doesn't mean other people can't learn it, especially yeah. other disciples. And Oryx Absolutely. was never a disciple himself, so presumably yep. they are stronger than him. So... Yeah. No, that's... Yeah. Like, uh, plus, we see Taken in the Vow Raid, don't we? Or is that all Scorn? Uh no there's I'm, no there's absolutely taken yeah, yeah. throughout the entire uh, third encounter so no, that well, shit throughout the entire second second no through everything past yeah. the entrance has taken yeah yeah so presumably that that's either the witness sending taken there which doesn't make sense because this pyramid's been locked up forever I I or think it's, it's rule absolutely bring yeah because because they're the, they're the, they're one of the well I there's there's both factions at the final um, room. But Rulk is there, like kind of bringing in all the all the stops, and so yeah. yeah. So yeah, I think you're right. I think I think there's no reason that the Taken in the Val raid are not under the direct guise of Rulk, right? And presumably, as another disciple, Nezarak would have similar power. So I think it would make sense for Nezarak to be able to control the Taken to attack the Soul Divisive and try and take knowledge of the black heart and the veil for themselves for whatever purposes they have and they would have survived the end right and they would have learned that this thing even exists by watching us go through this quest line yeah yep additionally on the so as far as the quest goes we are successful in killing the soul divisive uh mind the conceptual mind um which has the information about the black heart we take that information we bring it back to osiris and he says okay we have the top minds that are going to study this for clues and that that's kind of where it ends yep uh what we are granted as part of this quest line is the exotic machine gun deterministic chaos and the lore card on this gun is super interesting. Unfortunately, I cannot read it directly because the API is still locked. However, the general breakdown of the lore card is that there are two people talking in it. You have one, which is Rohan's kind of like inner monologue to himself. And then you have another, which is somebody else kind of commenting on Rohan and Rohan's actions. The first one is Rohan very clearly describing entering the Black Garden and witnessing the creation of the Black Heart roughly 10-some ten, ten years ago. Which then we killed nine-something years ago. Right, we killed about a year later after Rohan saw it and, and saw well, it be shit. created. I was and I always thought of it as like ancient and like no, it's fairly new. Holy shit. And remember Elsie very specifically came to us and said you need to destroy the black heart. If it had been ancient and had been around forever, it, it would have accomplished whatever goal it was going to they were going to accomplish yeah. with yeah. it. Yeah. 
So Elsie Cause, needed cause us to time, stamp it out. Because time to the vex, it's 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 like it's like a computer, right? Like one one or <laughs> I love the the Tron analogy of like we've been in here for ten light cycles. Well, for them that's ten days. For us that's less than a second. Right. Like, yeah. Time to the vex is is not a constraint. So the the black heart has not existed for very long by the time we found it and destroyed it. Uh, and Rohan witnessed its creation. That's kind of the first uh, set of, of notes in the lore card. And it, it's, it's written in this way where it's like uh, a section of Rohan monologue and then a section of someone else. And then a section of Rohan and a section of someone else. And you kind of have to like remove one person to read all of the other's observations. Sure. Uh, and Rohan had another voice kind of commenting on his actions and seemingly speaking to him. And the only person that it makes sense for that other voice to be, I think is Nezarak. I think you're right. I mean, who else, who else would, I, I mean, I can't think of anyone else that would be, cause I mean, again, think of the psychic, nature of of that we're thinking of with Nezrek, I I think you're right. Like that's that seems to be the only other person I mean, presumably the witness maybe, but the Possibly. witness seems to only be able to con uh 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 communicate through some instrument of light or some instrument of dark. Like right. it doesn't seem like he's he's using our ghost or like we're we're near the veil. So he talks to us through the pyramid ship. Like so there's gotta be some type of paracausality there for him to communicate with us. Um, like with the the tree of silver wings, like it's that's a that's right. a paracausality thing. Whereas like Rohan and the Cloud Striders, the only paracausality that they have is the veil itself. But they themselves are just they're organic just squishy bits. Yeah, they yeah. they're literally just augmented people that are, that people in, with nanites. Which can we stop for a second? I was so <laughs> I was so ready. For for all this Siva stuff to be like, oh, there's Siva lore and Siva this. That I will admit, I am a little upset about that, a little disappointed. It's a little unfortunate. It's all just, it's yeah. all just like, yay, nanotech, and we're like, we're just supposed to accept it. Like, yeah, all right, I, all right, you ass. Unfortunately, I think that is them very specifically saying like, we're we're done Siva with Siva done. guys. We're done with Siva. Yeah. yeah, and that's, I get it, but. God damn, man! Like I know. Give me, give me just one little lore entry. Just one little like, as as Maya handled the Siva and and handed it off to Gilgamesh, and Gilgamesh <laughs> inserted yeah. his code into it, and it became more. It became a silvery flow of blah blah blah, and Quicksilver was born. Like, just give me that. Just give me one little lore, one little ghost entry, one little like ghost. Like, hey, it looks like Maya was messing around with blah 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 blah, and then here's Siva. Oh, hey, and then it became the blah blah blah. Well, isn't that neat? Thanks. <laughs> yeah, that's all I want. That's all. Yeah. Just one little scannable. Just give me a scannable in one of the lost sectors. That's that, and I'll be. I'll shut up. I promise. Um, okay, sorry. Not to not to derail again. <laughs> but yes, I think, think I think I think Rohan uh, again. I think he's I think he's talking to Nesrak. I think that's the 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 that's the one psychic. Everything psychic seems to be flowing back to Nesrak. So that that seems to be the the logical conclusion there. Yeah, and the only thing that kind of pokes a hole in that is how was Nazarek talking to Rohan 10 years ago? You know, like presumably you know, he hadn't his consciousness hadn't been oh, assembled yet. Of like, yeah. He wasn't, you know, he hadn't been transferred into another vessel into Osiris yet to come to Niamuna and if he had the ability to talk to Rohan at this point, why didn't he Okay. 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 Well, theory time. Theory time. Yeah. Okay. You yeah, go you're, first. You're you go getting first. there. You. I think you just realized it at the same time. I realized it. His pyramid ship, and so, one of the entrances to the Black Garden is on the moon. This is true. Uh, and it Nezarak's pyramid ship at that. Yes. Yes. Uh, additionally, additionally, in one of so I wonder. I wonder if Nezarek has been, if his consciousness prior to the events of Season of Plunder were in the Black Garden, or or Ooh. a piece of it was in the Black Garden, like because that's where he was trapped, right? Because he specifically says in one of his one of his things that we read, 
you know, the soul divisive are truly the best of you. So he's had experience with yeah. the soul divisive prior to and this. His, his glaive was found abandoned on the moon. Like there's okay. a, there's an entrance to that. Maybe that I, I think, I mean, maybe that's where, he, where Nezarek escaped to was I think so. separated their mind from their body and went into, into the, the, the garden, garden and has been chilling there, which is, as Osiris said, a emotionally charged yep. location. It's been chilling there until, you know, until Rohan until shows up, Rohan shows up. I, or until something we did perhaps with his body kind of oh, allowed him to come back. He's been chilling there. He's been able to watch this black garden and been able to watch us destroy it and been like well shit now my plan's been foiled of stealing this thing yeah dude maybe he was the one that was original maybe maybe it wasn't a frame maybe he actually was gonna steal the veil and then sabathun saw it and was like that's gonna destroy the universe and stop my ultimate goal so i've got to do something about it maybe oh my god there's there's so many directions dude, that it, it that could makes have it, gone that but... makes it an even more coherent idea that that like that like takes away from the idea of like, well, maybe Savathun stole it and then like framed him. Now it seems like he saw this thing being built. Or no, 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 because it being built was only ten years ago. The collapse yeah. was hundreds of years ago. Yeah. But he saw the veil in this system and was like, Okay, that's what I need. I need the ultimate source of emotional power. And then Savathun saw him looking at it and was like, Hey, um, are we gonna go attack this thing? And then he's like, no, 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 I got to go touch that thing. And then Sabathun's like, um, maybe don't. And then <laughs> steals it away and seals it away. And now Nezrak is like, you witch. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and then separates himself and is like, okay, well, now I'm, now I'm in the Black Garden. Now I'm here. Like, oh, man. And it, it ultimately comes down. I mean, we, we know his ship was shot down. Yep. According to the records that Ido found in Season of Plunder, his ship was shot down during the collapse and crashed on the moon. Yep. Um, Which is odd because it's like so perfectly preserved. Like we right. don't see the bottom side of it and the back side, but like what could shoot down a, like a Cloud Strider is the only thing that's been able to, that we've seen. The Cloud Strider and the, and the, and the, the, the Traveler are the only yeah. two things that we know that have been able to hit this thing. Asher shot a nuke at it and it just disappeared. <laughs> Which, now that I think about it, did we ever see the scene with the Cloud Strider shooting a rocket at a pyramid? No. Ship? I don't think that ever came up. That was that was all, was marketing, all marketing fluff. Yeah. Damn, wow. damn you, marketing gods! <laughs> but, yeah, so there's... The, the other thing is we don't know where the veil originates from. Right. We, know it, we know it's 100% an artifact of darkness. Does that necessarily mean it came from the witness? Did it right. still somehow come from created? the traveler? Was yeah. it some? Was it something else? We we don't know exactly. Which I think would answer some of that, some of those questions as to like, what, where what was it, veil? and who like could have found yeah. it, and all that. But the veil is this all important thing that everyone in the universe seems to have every inkling and understanding of, <laughs> except except us. for the us <laughs> who have no fucking clue what it is. Us, the player, uh, maybe even the guardian knows what it is, and us, the player behind the guardian, are still like, "What the fuck is going on here?" Is is a tad frustrating for sure. But yeah, not here for that. Uh, so yeah, that essentially that that's the end of the unfinished business quest. It's you know we we complete. Uh, getting this data, we give it to Osiris. We have this uh, machine gun, which was once upon a time the the weapon of Rohan. Um, and we have this lingering question of like, how much does Nezarak know, and what do they really want? Yeah, because uh, it might be advantageous for us to work with them for at least a little while, or it might really not be. So. Uh, well, now okay. I got no idea either way. Yeah. So big question mark there still. Hopefully will be answered with the raid. Um, yeah. We're going to shift gears now to where did Niamuna come from? Because that is something we can answer with a certain amount of definitivity. Definitivity. Um, is to like... Where where did the people of Niamuna come from and how did it get from 
its beginnings to what we see today. So, Niamuna, as we know, going through the campaign, is built on uh, Ishtar Collective technology. The, the bunker where the veil is housed is all Ishtar Collective. Uh, it started as an Ishtar Collective colony that fled during the first collapse. The ship that was fleeing was called the Exodus Indigo which is mentioned on a few of the different Niamuna weapon flavor texts. Uh, as far as I could tell, Exodus Indigo did not exist, in our records at least, until Lightfall. So there isn't any previous lore entries to draw from about like, oh, Indigo is mentioned here, here, here kind of thing. Um, which helps lead to the, like, it was a hidden colony. Yes. This is a ship that, again, doesn't exist in our records anywhere. Uh, it was an Exodus ship, so it was a colony ship. It had presumably passengers in cryo on and it. Siva. Uh, and probably Siva. Uh, but the ship was helmed by the Ishtar Collective, specifically Maya Sundares, Sundaresh, uh, Chioma Essi. Um, some of these we only have first initials, so L. Uh, C, um, C, Sarah, uh, Sarchez and A Mirib were the main people that were piloting the ship, or at least we have lore about that were piloting the ship. Uh, Maya Sundaresh honestly needs an episode dedicated to her on on her own. Uh, so very much so. But to 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 do the very quick breakdown. She was the one of the main pioneers of Vex research in the Ishtar Collective. Uh, was seemingly working with Clovis Bray for a short period of time on creating the colonization AI Sotera, which was then pilloried off into the Spire of the Watcher. Uh, when Sotera saw the Black Fleet coming for the first collapse warned Rasputin and then tried to fire off colonization pods to help someone survive. Uh, Clovis didn't like her ignoring his, his commands when he was going, what the hell are you doing? And so he, he'd separated Sotera off and put her in, in Spire of the Watcher, uh, put most of her in the Spire of the Watcher. Um, but so this, this ship headed by Maya, uh, is this is during the collapse. The collapse is happening. Presumably the pyramid ships are in the system and they are trying to get out. And their ship is attacked by something. Don't know exactly what or who, but it's attacked by something that was wielding a stasis glaive. Because the information about their ship comes to us from the Winter's Bite exotic heavy glaive with that came in Lightfall. And whatever this thing is, they get reports on their on their ship of like something is out on the hull as they're in deep space. Something is out on the hull and it has pierced the hull with this trident looking thing. Uh, and if I remember, it's described as having like arms and legs and shit. Yeah, I, they don't ever get a good description of it or like a good look at it. But yeah, it's, something is here, uh, appears to to be, you know, humanoid-ish, and it it can just punch through their 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 ship with this this glaive, this stasis trident. Hashtag uh, tormentor. Well, I don't think tormentors existed. And that's, oh, and that's that's right because they thought about it. Yeah, yeah, because okay. tormentors were were described at least as a merge of Callus Callus's ideas and or Callus's technology and the witnesses' ideas, or so, something of the two. They were a merge yep. between the two. Um, so I don't think tormentors existed at this point. Uh, and by wielding a glaive, I don't know. I don't believe Rulk fashioned glaives for anybody that wasn't a disciple like it doesn't seem like he made glaives for for his like the bulk of of their forces it looks like it was kind of a special thing 
You only got it if you were of a certain rank. Sure. That rank being disciple of the witness. Yeah. So they may have been attacked by a disciple of some sort. Um, Nezarek? Maybe. But, well, we know what happened to Nezarek's glaive. That's true. So not Nezarek. Presumably they only ever have one glaive. It's not like right. they have a... They're not like us who are just carrying around like 10 glaives. <laughs> and they're like, hey, you need a glaive? All right, come here, come with me. I can craft right, it for you. Yeah. So uh, maybe this was Un. Maybe this is someone else. Don't know. Uh, but regardless, they're, they're under attack from this force. And uh, interestingly enough, Maya says, deploy the cloud walkers to counter. Which we talked about this pre-Lightfall. There is reference of the cloud walkers in a in a hunter cloak from D1 being the first colony, like the first colonists were called cloud walkers. Uh, Makes and sense. it seems like Maya is treating the cloud walkers almost as like a protection force or a military force for this colonization ship. You know, if she's saying deploy them to fight off this thing. Yep. I uh, which they end up not doing. She ends up getting she's talked out of it by like, uh, like what are they going to do? You're just going to be losing people. Um, and what they do instead is they pick up a signal and it seems to be a distress signal. It seems to be a signal asking for help, but it's from the Vex. And Maya has this idea of, if we can find out where that signal is coming from and intercept kind of its trajectory and then take the signal in and broadcast it out of our ship, we can make it look like we are a Vex ship, like the signal is coming from us kind of thing. Block its real source and then make us the broadcast point. And whatever this thing is that's chasing us will, won't think we're human. It'll think we're Vex and hopefully leave us alone was the gamble here but by doing that it means they also have to follow wherever that signal is going in order for them to stay masked in order for them to block it out block out the original source to broadcast it as them and, and so and who better to do so with a vex signal than the, the leading Maya. mind yeah. of <laughs> yeah my address the leading mind of vex tech at the time yeah so now they're in this, this situation where they're gambling. They're going, okay, we're going to take the signal. We're going to make it look like we're a Vex. But that also means we're going to be driving down into Vex that are scared of something. And what, what scares a Vex? Like they don't have emotions. Like They shouldn't be like scared, fear. That's an emotion. That shouldn't... Well, they, and not, they... not, to say, not to say that the Vex are... We don't have confirmation that they're feeling scared, but they are asking for help. The Vex are saying, we need help at this location. So something is threatening them to the point where they are, they are just putting a general broadcast out saying, somebody save us. That's weird. Like, why wouldn't they just ask for more Vex? Like, that's, that's such a weird thing for a Vex to do, to be like, I need help. Like, can, <laughs> like, like a math major, he's over here like, <laughs> Hey, um, can I have help on this? I don't really understand the quadratic equation. I I just need a little help. Like that's what that seems like to me, right? Like, yeah, like yeah. the the vex shouldn't shouldn't be in that situation. Shouldn't be in that situation. They at should all. be able to just call in reinforcements or you know whatever. But something something has them spooked, and so they are uh, sending out a distress signal. Maya's ship makes it look like it's coming from them. It succeeds in throwing off whatever or whomever was trying to attack them. And they leave the Exodus Indigo alone uh, with the glaive still stuck in it. Uh, and the Exodus Indigo follows the signal, presumably to Neptune. And this is where we have a, a pretty significant time gap of we don't know what happened between this and between kind of Niamuna already being there as a colony, not as a city, but as a colony. 
So we have a lot of questions here. Was was the veil already there? And the veil was what was causing the Vex to be like, oh my God, we don't know what's going on. Brain, uh, brain overload. <laughs> was it was were the Vex scared of Savathun when Savathun showed up with the veil to hide oh, it there? Sure. Yeah. Um were the you know, is this was this Nezarak? Was had Nezarak been shot down and and they were invading the Vex network or trying to get to the soul divisive already, although it that wouldn't necessarily track to, to Neptune. So we're we're not a hundred percent sure what it was that was causing the Vex to like freak out. But presumably whatever it was, humanity was able to avoid or survive beyond. Because the very next chronological entry we get is from the Cloud Strider uh, named Stargazer. And, well, I guess chronologically it would have been Strider first. Uh, Strider being the first Cloud Strider first that all Cloud others are named yeah. after. Yep. However, the, the lore information for Strider uh, was... I, well... No, I, I do actually have a theory for what that distress signal might have been. So, I'm glad you got a theory. Because my, my whole idea was like, like when I started d this quest for the Cloud Striders, was like, oh, well, there's five of them. There's five people mentioned in the glaive. They've got to be the original Cloud Striders. Like Maya Sundaresh was the first Cloud Strider and da-da-da-da-da. But no. I, I didn't <laughs> truly understand like there's a time gap here of like, hey, they crash land several hundred years later neomuna happens like <laughs> yeah apparently apparently it takes sivo a while to work <laughs> right um so the the very first cloud strider strider is their name uh they are the ones that at some point after the ship landed um and the colony was established they created something called the side reel and the side reel is the machine question mark that allows for the augmentations that create cloud striders. Okay. Uh, Strider supposedly was the inventor of it and then put themselves through it so that they could, with the intention of turning themselves into, you know, a, a one person army to, be the barrier between the colonists and the Vex that were on Neptune already. Makes uh, sense. They, you know, they were the defender. They were the, the wall similar to how, you know, Titans were for the last city. The cloud striders were, were the wall between the colonists and the Vex. And at the time that Strider made this thing, uh, they did not understand that it was going to put an expiration date on them. Uh, until after they had already gone through the augmentations and had been using them for a significant amount of time, uh, did they start to to feel the effects and ended up getting you know getting themselves checked out to find that all of these augments cause continual um, like micro lacerations for all of your internal organs. And that that's Weird. why that's you're, why there's a expiration. You're telling me that if I put metal bits in my body <laughs> that the squishy bits aren't going to mesh with it very well. Pro probably not, especially if those metal bits are forcing the squishy bits <laughs> to do things, things faster than yeah. they should be. <laughs> like, you know, there's the stories of people you know, having that that adrenaline response where they can lift yeah. cars and things. Yeah. What you now usually you just have that on demand. <laughs> right. And what you usually don't see on those stories is that those people usually suffer pretty severe like muscular tears when they yeah. when they do that. Because yeah. we're not meant to do that. Yeah. We have we have physical limits as to why our body doesn't let us do that under most circumstances. But um, science says otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> So needless to say, um, Strider was the one to realize the expiration date. Uh, and, you know, that that trend has continued with all of the Cloud Striders after. Uh, Strider was also, as we learn in the memorial quest chain, and it's 
it's kind of interesting because the more memorial quest chain technically has you start from one of the most recent well you, you kind of hop around some of the more recent cloud striders and then you end with the the oldest one yep. um but strider found a vex that wasn't all vex strider found a vex mind that strider refers to as the occlusion that that's what it's titled is the occlusion and this mind didn't want anything to do with the vex in fact it wanted to be protected from the vex and well, what the hell strider saw it as kind of a like a lost child of sorts kind of a like you know a, a new thing had been born and their their Vex response, really are evolving. Their response was protect it. You know, this this thing is scared of the Vex. I need to protect it. And I, I I'm guessing that that Vex mind is what sent the original distress signal. Sure. It would it would look like a Vex sig- signal because it's coming from a Vex mind. But if it's asking for help, it's not actually Vex. It is this new right. thing. Like if if it just because it looks like a duck and talks like a duck doesn't mean it's not a swan like yeah (laughs) yeah yeah uh what we learn from this quest line from the the cloud strider memorial quest line we we learn this at the end of the quest line but chronologically it's relevant now this vex mind identifies as two things it identifies as vex and it identifies as soterra Boom. Mic drop. So presumably, when Sotera was pilloried, was was cut off from the Exodus ships and put in that pillory location, she was successful in getting one of those pods out. She was successful in getting a, a ship and a piece of herself out before Clovis could shut things down. Presumably, that landed on Neptune, and that piece of Soterra was either the Vex found her and tried to assimilate her into their network, or she saw the Vex network as a way to hop over into, you know, not be trapped anymore in the ship and hop over into something that she had more agency with. I. Uh, and and we don't know how much of Soterra is there. Clearly, it's it was it was a piece. It wasn't all of her, um, but I, enough I, to communicate. I, I I again draw that analogy to Horizon's uh, description of like an overarching AI yeah. with yep. Gaia and those different sub sub minds. Um, Soterra seems to be the same way. It's it's almost like each bit of like for this to be such so childlike and to like ask for help. It it to me it seems like each sub mind is um, almost like another emotion, right? Like, like this is fear. This is, and then like whatever's in the, the pillory could have been like proudness or whatever. Like right. it's, that, that to me is what it seems like. So I think the, the timeline of events here, again, not concrete, but I think we can, we can infer timeline of events. So Terra landed on Neptune um, established a connection somehow with with a vex mind and became assimilated as part of it was not over overtaken by it but became something new uh, that had the ability to think for itself enough to be scared of the other vex it is what put out the distress signal that was then picked up by maya and the rest of exodus indigo who used it to follow it to neptune Strider then, however many years later, was the one that discovered the source of that as the occlusion, this this Vex mind, um, and chose to protect it from the rest of the Vex. Do you think we'll ever get to meet this uh, occlusion, this Soteria? I, I hope so. I mean, it, they do send us a message at the end of the quest. Um, they oh, they are right. They are the one that gives us the glaive i well no excuse me the glaive comes from the archives from quinn um but it comes with a message along with it which is from this this hive mind uh or this vex mind because that's that's where it identifies as you know self 
uh, Vex, Soteria, um, para- uh, uh, talking to Paracausal Hero. And I was like, oh, yeah. that's us. Yeah, We're it's the hero. a message from occlusion. Self yeah. equals output dot Vex, output dot Soterra, subject Paracausal Hero. Uh, and then the message is, I endure gratitude. Yep. There's another message that we're going to talk about at the end of this, though. Uh, so Strider finds finds the occlusion, decides to protect it, um, presumably from other Neomunians as well. Like, this is a secret, which makes sense. They don't necessarily want everyone else to know that they're, you know, housing a hive or a, a Vex mine they're, somewhere. They're, they're fe- <laughs> it's like a fugitive hive mine, and everyone's like, yeah. What are you? And everyone's like, no, 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 it's okay. He's on our side, I promise. But he's a Vex. Like, what the hell? <laughs> right. Um, and say, presu- another, I guess, potential is that uh, the occlusion scaled, scared the rest of the Vex because the rest of the Vex were like, we don't know what this is. We need help. Oh, um, or like, like the idea of like cut it off. Right. Like yeah. that's 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 not correct. That is not Vex and, and we don't know how to deal with that. Cut it off. So one way or another, I think that was the event that led to the the distress signal. Um so after Strider, we had uh Maelstrom, I believe was next. Uh and Maelstrom was considered a great warrior and tactician. Uh, and created the Asur Academy, which was or is still the training grounds for new Cloud Striders and other elite students. Um, Maelstrom is mostly remembered for defeating a group of human rebels, which were called the Uplift Coven. And this doesn't exactly tie into anything in particular, but it was an interesting little bit of their history. The Uplift Coven was a group of Cloud Strider trainees that were rejected and did not take that rejection very well from Maelstrom um, because there's only ever two Cloud Striders. Maelstrom was looking for one apprentice, essentially, and decided, well, I'm going to have a class of, you know, 20 or however many and then i'm gonna pick one of them the others were not terribly thrilled with that and so these rejected cloud strider trainees decided to essentially become terrorists but they had all the training they didn't have the modifications but they had all the military training of cloud striders at this point uh so they were quite the force to to deal with especially when uh, Niamuna doesn't seem to have a military beyond their two Cloud Striders. And so Maelstrom had to deal with these trainees themselves uh, and eventually had to put them down. She had to, to put down her own students. Ouch. Yeah. But Maelstrom did choose a successor. Uh, and that successor. She reveals the secret of the Cloud Striders too. And that is that ever since Strider, the very first Cloud Strider, when the new senior Cloud Strider is chosen, or or I guess when a new Cloud Strider is chosen, the senior passes along the secret to the junior. And that is the shutdown button for the side reel and the ability to end the cloud strider program from that point forward holy shit so they they hand them the self-destruct and say if you do not believe cloud striders should be made anymore here's the button to kill it for future generations and make them figure out a different way what does that do does it does it kill the machine does it like i I think all nanotech like what i think it self-destructs the side reel which is the machine that that does itself. all the augments. Yep, yep. Holy um, shit. And I mean, presumably, presumably you just build it again, but I, well, if, and from the sounds of it, this is like a full doomsday thing. Like even the code on how it works gets all. And I think I, that's the case. Cause they, they very much say that like this, this will destroy the side reel. This will end cloud striders for the future. Permanently. 
Yep. So uh, for whatever reason, it doesn't seem like they would be able to recreate it. Interesting. Uh, some, so after Maelstrom, the next Cloud Strider of note that we get information on is, uh, and I, I think this is correct chronologically. I'm not 100% sure, but I believe it's Stargazer is the next one. Like and the most the most recent one uh is is the next it comes after maelstrom chronologically right it it could be flipped i'm not 100% sure on that but it's it's not super relevant one way or the other um so stargazer is a very important cloud strider because stargazer did a couple of things um stargazer was a mathematician originally and stargazer talks about the occlusion um, and that the occlusion was scared of the Vex. So confirmed that um, and say, Oh, and, and going back to Maelstrom, Maelstrom also uh, talked with the occlusion quite a bit or, or accessed the occlusion quite a bit. So presumably the, the secret of the occlusion has also been passed down through the cloud striders. And uh, Maelstrom used the occlusion to, uh, to, to simulate things. You know, used it as an electric oracle of sorts. Um, Which and is that's, exactly what a hive mind would do. Like, Well, and that, that is probably why Maelstrom was considered such a brilliant tactician, because they had access to a Vex computer yeah, to, yeah. to try and predict when Vex were going to attack and how and why and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, but Maelstrom, cause that's, cause that's what all those mines are for. Like the, all those Vex mines, right. are, like they, they are just, ju- they, they're like the king of the simulations, like, yeah. Ultimate uh, computing, computing power type thing. But Maelstrom didn't believe, didn't, didn't, you know, believe in whatever it simulated a hundred percent. Uh, they said, you know, this Oracle is useful, but can't be trusted. So they very much kept it at arm's length, but used its abilities. Um, Stargazer seemed to form more of a personal connection to know that the occlusion was scared of the rest of the Vex. But what Stargazer did in regards to Niamuna is, as as their name suggests, rediscovered the sky. So in Stargazer's lore entries, we learned that uh, Niamuna is not, in fact, hidden by the veil. Niamuna is simply hidden by the fact that Neptune has an incredibly thick atmosphere and a very strong magnetic field that prevents any instruments from being able to see the city below. Well, no shit. In addition was, to that, I was I was under this whole idea of like Wakanda, like ah, oh, we got I know, we got I know, unobtainium, uh, and we've got crazy shields that shield us from everything. No, it's just we don't have instruments that can read any of this shit. Right, you you the atmosphere is so thick you can't see through it, and there's a magnetic field that makes it so you can't use anything to to sense it. And I know a lot of people were kind of disappointed by that, by like, well, why couldn't we find it? I, I because think, science, you ass. <laughs> well, that, but also, if if you want to say, okay, they couldn't, they couldn't use instruments, so why didn't they fly down and look around for it? You got to realize who who flies into a gas giant. <laughs> well, a who flies into a gas giant, but also, you got to realize that Neptune is enormous, it's fucking huge. That's and a lot of area to cover. Even though Neomuna seems. Ama- like seems huge and larger than life and amazing. Neomuna is referenced as being five million strong is their population. Yeah. What's what's the closest city we have? <laughs> uh, I don't know in in terms of population off the top of my head, but I mean e- even if we just like take take even a, a a big city, let's say like Manhattan, uh, or you know New New York, New York City. Put it anywhere on the globe, on the earth. And have the entire rest of the globe empty. And have everything else empty. How easy is that going to be to find? Like, 
I, I see, I see your logic. <laughs> and now, and now take that rest of the earth and make it, you know, 15 times its size. And that's what Neptune would be. So yep. I guess I can't fault them too much for not being able to find this little speck on the, that's on true. the globe. That's true. Um, kind, I, kind yeah. of, kind of like a, really like now you're going to use science on your, right, in your yeah. favor like okay <laughs> so the rest of the time it's been space magic and darkness and light paracausality now it's like but science what if science works <laughs> yeah but so interestingly enough not only does this atmosphere and magnetic field prevent things from seeing into niamuna it also prevented niamuna from seeing the rest of the system Yep. Their instruments couldn't pierce it either to see what was going on everywhere else. There's there's a there's a patrol um in one of the zones that's like that that describes that exact thing. It's like this this is the buoy. Imagine trying to find this whole place without a buoy buoy. It'd be like a ne- needle in a haystack type yeah. thing. Yeah. So Stargazer though devised a way to still to to see beyond and to, to get sensors beyond this this limitation. And finally, for the first time, Niamuna was able to see what does the rest of the solar system look like? Because all they knew was the collapse was happening and then they escaped or their their founders escaped. And Oh, that okay. As far as they knew, they were they were it. Like they were uh, the, the was, last of humanity. The end of humanity. Yeah. I mean, every presumably every ship that had anything to do anything like Mara pres- uh, thought that they were the last, and then they come back, and there's all this yep. shit. So that yeah, the collapse really was this like universe-ending thing. So Stargazer found a way to pierce pierce the veil around the planet. Uh, uh, I know. Um, uh, and the very first thing that Stargazer did was find out is is look at earth essentially measure look, go look go home, look right? at earth go see what is left of home yeah and much to their surprise they find that humanity still exists there and now exists in a new form of these by these things called warlords that wield these incredible powers but are these ruthless terrible beings uh, from Stargazer's point of view. Yeah. Uh, and th- this is the Dark Age. Like, he, yep. he is, they appeared into Earth during the Dark Age of the Guardians. Warlords are running amok, and we know they were not very nice people for the most part. And uh, Stargazer, instead of being like, oh, this is great, there are people, saw the warlords and went, we wouldn't stand a chance against them. I that's, cannot let them find us. That's crazy. Like to think like this all powerful, but I mean, I guess to them, like they're just like, well, this is just nanotech and stuff and blah, blah, blah. But to, I mean, to then look at this paracausality and be like, well, that thing's going to just kill us. Like, fuck that. I mean, you got two cloud striders that are, that's um, true, are far above human limitations, but they can't throw giant yeah. bombs of Nova <laughs> energy out of their hand. Like that's true. The, it's scary shit to to see nope. these ruthless things just annihilating each other with would equate to like pocket nukes. Yeah. Yeah. And yep. so Stargazer makes the decision. I am not going to let them find us. And Stargazer makes a trip to Earth. Gets gets a ship, whatever, it, you know, whatever the method was. Stargazer goes to Earth and hacks quote unquote the submind malahayati get out of here and uses and and then this is one thing to point to point out niamuna's technological advances never stopped right and if we're at the dark ages this is probably a couple hundred, hundred years, years after the collapse easily Easily several hundred years. So Niamuna has had hundreds of years to advance their technology in the in the need for survival. So even, you know, they have great motivation to do so. Uh, a war mind to Stargazer probably wasn't all that difficult to deal with. 
or, well, or a, a and, piece of a war mind, I guess. And could, could presumably feel familiar. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because they, I mean, they have AI of a sort yeah. on yeah. Niamuna. So Stargazer went to earth, found the submind Malahayati as a access point to the greater network of information that was still existed on earth and used Malahayati to erase all records on, on the earth networks of any information oh, about shit. Neptune or Exodus Indigo. So that was, that's, that was what we were looking at at the end of the exotic glaive quest back in witch queen when it talks about Neffel Stronghold, and that's the only reference at all that we get for it, and everything else was scrubbed, and Anna theorized that the only person that could have done that would have been Red, but it was actually Stargazer. It was Stargazer using one of Rasputin's sub-minds, Malahayati, to do it. Yep. Yep. And to, the, the only... to then make it look like it was Red. Yeah, exactly. no, that's, yeah, yeah. And the only reason that the Neffel Stronghold had any information about the Veil and about Niamuna was because it was off the network. Rasputin separated it from the greater network to hide it away. That's right. Yep. Because that's the secret bunker we go to. To uh, uh, God, I, I wish I could remember what, what specifically we were doing in that bunker, but it was last season uh, yep. to help reconnect everything. Yep. Uh, so then the, the next Cloud Strider that we are going to talk about that is... Um, of great import is cloud strider known as blue jay i uh, now blue jay is a criminal <laughs> to before they were a cloud strider they were known as a criminal within niamuna um however blue jay is essentially responsible for the cloud arc's existence in its current form I uh, once upon a time before Blue Jay, the cloud arc was only used as data storage and distribution, essentially our what we consider the internet nowadays. But Blue Jay identified that it could be so much more. You know, that that there there was we were we were using this for paltry things when there is an entire digital universe inside of it that hadn't been tapped into. And Blue Jay saw that as a great travesty. And so with no authorization from anybody, especially Neomunia's, uh, I think it's a council that governs them, um, Blue Jay developed a uh, kind of their own version of the cloud arc. Uh, now we know that the cloud arc had a, a early version of the cloud arc had been developed by the Ishtar collective uh, to try and do some of this. And in Blue Jay's uh, lore entries, it does talk about the government was doing kind of dives into the cloud, into their version of the cloud arc for research purposes only. And it was under very strict control. Like most people didn't even know that the ability existed. Blue Jay creates their own and dives into the cloud arc and is just trying to figure out what can I do here? This limitless possibility in this digital space. Let you know, I, I want to figure out everything that, that's possible here. And in doing so, in diving into the depths of, of the cloud arc, Blue Jay discovers someone's already here. Someone's already using the cloud arc for simulation. It's the Vex. They've been here a while at this point. God uh, dang Vex. <laughs> and so Blue Jay forms, identifies that that's bad. <laughs> They, yeah. they should not have access to this, um, but identifies that they can't do it on their own. And so Blue Jay forms a team of some sort of other, you know, uh, 
people that are going around the the Neomonian government and they all jump in and they lead a I guess what could be considered a a, cru- a grand crusade against the Vex and the Cloud Ark. And they identify where the back door is between the Vex network and the Cloud Ark network and they drive the Vex out. They drive them back through that door and then they close it and lock it behind them to restrict so, them from ever having access to the cloud arc again. So essentially he just went and found the correct port and just yeah. shut that port off. Yeah, essentially. <laughs> but all, all they, the AT, IT guys out there are like, well, <laughs> shit, I do that on a daily basis. Am I a cloud strider? I mean, I'm, kind I'm a of. cloud strider. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it was a dangerous venture for blue Jay because they were doing it in a simulated space. And even and they they had to fight the vex similar to how we do in the vex network yep. these are humans that are yep. entering the vex network that are fighting the vex and if your consciousness dies in the vex network you like it doesn't come back to the body yeah uh and blue jay in in their lore cards the body is on, cannot exist without the mind right blue jay in their lore cards is on trial for this grand offense of accessing the ark without permission essentially um, and in the trial, he talks about like, you dare to sit here and patronize me when I, I lost friends in the fight to save all of you. I yeah. uh, like, so, so some of the people that were on his team died in the pursuit of pushing the Vex out of the cloud arc. I, uh, this is also this, presumably, this sounds, this sounds very matrixy to me. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, it is. All, all it really I would is. do is be like, you think that's air you're breathing? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, stop trying to hit me and hit me. So uh, presumably this is the moment that prompted the Vex to really start becoming a problem and actively uh, be aggressive towards the Neomuni because you know, they've lost access to this, this thing yep. that they need. They want it back. Yep. They want, cause they, they wanted to get to the veil. They were, they were attacking the, well, attacking is probably strong. Well, we'll, we'll say attacking, uh, Soteria, Soterra, the, the, the Vex, not Vex. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to try to get access to this thing. So yeah, yeah, no, that makes sense. So, um, so Blue Jay, after all of this, the Cloud Arc is secure. Blue Jay is now on trial. Uh, and the, the main reason why it seems that the use of the Cloud Arc has, for simulation specifically has been so heavily restricted is, quote, fear of others' bad experiences, which Blue Jay then shoots right back at the council and says those experiences were hundreds of years ago. So I'm wondering if our favorite Vex expert, Maya Sundaresh tried to do, you know, tried to do this, tried to start her own simulation engine using the cloud arc and had something bad happen. I mean, when we're going down to get to Callus, we see, one of those early prototypes and 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 uh uh nimbus calls that it's like hey that must be an early prototype to the to the cloud arc upload so yeah and it and it's right there right in the ishtar collective portion of it so yeah there's no reason to say that uh she didn't yep and uh so but the council identifies that they would you know there there would be a great threat on their doorstep if not for blue jay's actions and so they, instead of incarceration, say, you will be placed under house arrest, but continue to allow, or will, will allow you to continue your simulation research under Cloud Strider supervision. So essentially, the, the, the thing I got from it was essentially, you are going to become a Cloud Strider so that you will be under our control while you do this research. Yeah. That's and yeah. it's either that or go to prison or yeah or death like yeah, yeah. no that's yeah so that checks out <laughs> one way or another <laughs> that checks out with current <laughs> politics and, yeah. and human reasoning <laughs> yeah no that's yeah one way or another blue jay became a cloud strider and is is kind of the the father of the cloud arc as neomunians know it now like is the reason why it is 
now available as a a virtual space that everyone can just upload themselves into. Because that's that's another thing to, that I don't think is really shown off throughout uh, Lightfall is the people of Neomuna Neomuna are real. There are yes. physical bodies stored somewhere deep underground, uh, and all of their consciousness exist in that digital space and they travel around the city in a digital space. So all those little like those little like almost like little beacons of light you see um and you see a ton of them near Nimbus and and in the immediate area around mm-hmm. him. Those are people. Those are the people of Neomuna. They 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 are alive. They're happy, healthy. They're well, happy is probably a strong word. They're a little fearful right now because of yeah. Nazrex running amuck in there. Um but they yeah, so they it it when 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 the when this neo Mooney, the the whole expansion and Neptune and everything was was being shown off, I thought we were going to walk around. There were going to be people like hiding under bushes and stuff, like hiding in their apartments and boxes and stuff. And then when there weren't, I was like, well, what the? Where the hell are all the people? But that's yeah. what it is. It's they they are there. They just they are there digitally. And so like when you go accept quest from them, you're actually accepting a quest from a person. Um, there, there, there'll be the, the little blue nodes, uh, of, 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 uh, patrols, um, to go to, to, that you're conversing with somebody in the cloud arc and they're like, Hey, um, shit's bad in here. Go, go kill some people. Like, okay. Yep. Um, so we have some entries from the lore book called last days that talk a lot about the Neomuni culture leading up to them all uploading into the cloud arc uh which i don't necessarily think we have time to read all of it but i'm going to hit the main points um the so the neomuni were not digital consciousnesses until recently they still walked like they walked around the city they lived their everyday lives it's just instead of sitting down at a computer and opening a web browser to do your work or do research or whatever it may be they sat down in a seat and put on like cloud arc VR and uploaded themselves into the cloud arc. And that was, that was their version of the internet was they went to this digital space to access information, interface with other people over distance, that kind of thing. Uh, so they all knew their consciousness could be uploaded, but they had only ever used it for temporary trips. Until we get to the last days. Now, the last days explain that they knew, or at least had reason to believe very strongly, the Pyramid Fleet was coming back. And as a precaution, before the Pyramid Fleet got here, they made the decision, which was voted on by the population, to go into lockdown. And what lockdown instituted was that everybody on Neptune or everyone part of Neomuna at least would enter a metabolic stasis chamber where their body's biological functions were slowed to as you know to as as much as they could be while still surviving. And their mind would continue to live on in the cloud arc so that they could still interact and do things in this digital space while their organic body was in a bunker underground being kept alive by machines. Very Matrix. (laughs) Very Matrix. Uh, But this, this lockdown was an action that was done as a, like, we know those things are coming this is our best way to hide ourselves again. Which is interesting because that like they put so much faith in like whatever is coming can't, you know, right. hack the system and break into it and steal all the stuff and just shut it down. Like that's that's kind of a bold move on their part. It really is. Um say in addition to that, I so the rest of the book is more about kind of people's response to that. Not a lot of, you know, there were some people that were all for it. There were a lot of people that had lots of struggles. Um, There were some that saw this as the end of the world and they had like trauma units that were out amongst the civilians that hadn't uploaded yet 
trying to, uh, cause a lot of those civilians saw like suicide as the out. Um, and they were trying to, you know, help those people and, and help them understand that, you know, yes, this is scary. And it feels like you're, you're, you're going in a pod to die, uh, versus, you know, taking control of it yourself, but you know, you, you will survive this kind of thing. Like it, it was really kind of a, a sad book to read through kind of the, the public response from, from some people. I mean, what, uh, do, you, what do you do for the end of the world? Right. <laughs> um, in addition to that, there were a few people that were violently against it. And as time went on, these people, as much as they tried to convince them, these people did not, were like, we're not going to go in cryo. We're not going to go in the, in your cloud arc thing. We're, we're not going to do it. We're going to stay ourselves flesh and blood. But those people were a risk to everybody else that was going to go in the cloud arc because those people would require significantly more provisions than yep. someone that was in cryo. Those are people that now have physical run of the city and could potentially do, you know, not to say that there weren't security constructs that could be controlled digitally, but like the, these people were a security risk. Yep. Plus if these people did something stupid that couldn't be controlled or confined within the cloud arc and somehow gave away everyone else's position, that's also a problem. So near the end of the deadline of lockdown, some of these like rebel groups that had armed themselves and had stolen provisions to try and ride out the end of the world. Uh, they were found by new Mooney authorities and were forcibly frozen in cryo to sleep it out. So they, they didn't get, they uploaded. didn't get uploaded. They just popsicles. <laughs> they, yep. They're like, Holy if you don't want to, you know, if you don't want to be uploaded, we're not going to force that on you and we're not going to kill you. You ain't, ain't going to run free, <laughs> but we're going to make sure that you are not a threat to, to everyone Holy else. Shit. That's a, uh, I mean, that, I'm, I could see both sides of it, right? Like I could see like the, okay, this is a security risk. Uh, you can't be out there just willy nilly chilling out there and, and giving us, giving the rest of us away. Oh, we promise we won't. It's like, okay, that's cool. That's cute. I, I like where your head's at, but maybe, maybe come hide with us yeah. in cryo. Well, and yeah. for a lot of these groups, it wasn't discussions anymore. It was <laughs> <Yeah>. armed retaliation. <laughs> yeah. So. Like you, you are not taking me into that, into that cloud art crap. And they're like, oh yeah, yeah. I think we are. Yeah. About that. Uh, but that's not to say everything was was doom and gloom. There were <laughs> turns out the government had something to say about the end of the universe. <laughs> oh man. Oh, uh, but that's not to say everything was doom and gloom. In the cloud arc, life is very comfortable for the people that have uploaded there. It is, in many cases, people uh, have an exact replica of what it was outside. Like they live in the same home, they have the same furniture, all that stuff. But they also have the option to change things if they're comfortable doing so. And now they can change things with a thought. They can say, you know what? I didn't like that couch. I want a different couch. And they have it. Or God, in more you imagine? in like more it. severe cases, they can change themselves. Holy shit. There, there are people that they can manipulate their avatar to be whatever they want. There, there was a couple entries of someone that was literally walking around as a, like, math equation was their body oh, i that'd be awesome there is a another one of a chef who was trying to figure out like how do i run a restaurant business where all the food is just simulation like perfectly simulated versions of food there's no there's no cooking how do i do my old job and they landed on i can take the emotions i feel when cooking a dish and i can Get upload that code into the simulated food and i can instead of making someone can you, can you imagine eating joy exactly they can make like, them taste an emotion what the fuck i it, it's i don't know it's that's really awesome. wild like that's a really cool <laughs> thing but like it feels kind of dangerous so the this is the the world that 
the Neomuni are living in right now is this digital space where all of these different options are available to them that didn't exist in the outside world. And like you, it's really cool, but it, I wonder when it's going to tip into dangerous. I could finally be a cat. <laughs> yes. Oh, that'd yes, be you could. awesome. Oh, oh that'd be awesome. I could be a Moogle. Oh, you my God. You could be God. a Moogle. Yeah. I could be a soda can. Dude, what's the game where like you hide as ob- that's that that's I would do that on a daily basis. <laughs> like, hey, I'm a plant. And then all of a sudden, haha, I'm a fridge. <laughs> so with that This is dangerous. This is a dangerous <laughs> game. With that, we come to the close on our post campaign and Neomunian history. Um we're there are a couple other little things that I, I had on the list of stuff we could talk about, um, but we're getting really close to time. I was, was going to say, we're pushing it on time. <laughs> yeah, so, because, uh, you know, you will know the result of our efforts by the time this comes out. Bazor and I are participating in, in the day one race um, to at least get the 48-hour emblem is our, our hope. Yep. Uh, we've, but we've been trying we'll ever see. since, uh, uh, I think, what was Deep Zone Crypt our first one? I believe so. Yeah, I think I Deepstone think, was. I don't think we did Garden. No, no, no. I, no. I know for a fact we didn't do Garden because that's that's where you and I met. We're we're in yep. the days of of Garden. Uh, so yeah, yeah, uh, yeah we've done Deepstone. We've done Vault. We've done uh, King's Fall, uh, and now we're gonna do Root of Nightmares. God, I'm excited. That that emblem looks. Too. Did did you see the little like the little the little like uh the little splash square at the beginning of it? It looks yeah. like a it looks like a tormentor holding a I know. I'm so I like I oh man. I am I'm ready for it. I am here for it. We're gonna have uh, we're gonna have story time all throughout the raid. Like yes. we're gonna be in the middle of an encounter <laughs> and Myth's gonna go, Oh my god, and I'm gonna be like, I know <laughs> <laughs> so everyone's gonna uh, be like shut up go dps <laughs> dps check damn it um you could talk during the jumping <laughs> puzzle <laughs> so real quick we have two shout outs we're gonna go through um the first one comes to us from rook on audible not, uh not rook not rook rook <laughs> as in the, the chess piece uh i From Audible, they say, um, such a great show. Love the two hosts. The format of readings and responses makes for engaging, listening, a great Destiny podcast. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. That's that's why I let Myth do all the homework. Wink, wink. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, (laughs) Although you can still put your own own theories together, as we saw last time. I know. I don't know what the hell happened. I like all my brain power went into the last episode. Now it's gone. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Our second shout out comes to us from uh rob on twitter uh, and they say i just wanted to say thanks for how much i've enjoyed the content you guys have put out it's the perfect companion to listen to while i'm working getting my mind blown cracking up at your silly jokes and deepening my appreciation for the incredible war oh well thank you guys you. are sweet you guys are awesome yeah gives gives you the warm and fuzzies it does Good feeling to go right right into a day one raid with very little <laughs> sleep and lots of Dr. Pepper. <laughs> yes. Yes. I'm I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> we'll be fine. We'll get in there and in 30 minutes we'll have lost all consciousness. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, uh, um, yeah. Yeah. You got I got Shoot. Do you want to do anything else, Smith? You got your regular regular plug? Uh, yeah. So real quick, um, you know, we, you can hear our episodes on a major platform. Uh, if you are so inclined and enjoyed what you heard, go ahead and leave us a uh, review or a star rating on that platform. If you feel strongly enough that you want to come out and, uh, say something to us, we're on Twitter at myths and stories with a Z spelled the same way as the, the show, um, or a text review. You may hear yourself on a later episode. Yeah. Well, I guess I got my thank you. Uh, I'm going to thank a secret guest, uh, Asher Mir. You're the best. <laughs> and I fucking yes. love you. And I'm so, I'm so in love with the secret mission. <laughs> it's a good one. It's I've been glaving my butt off. Assistant! <laughs> yes. I, yes. I'm, I'm sad we didn't get to talk about that one in this episode, but 
and and some of the stuff that like Osiris had about the the light and dark and all of his little paws and everything like that. There's so there's so much in this expansion it really that it's just is. it's it's like eye opening, but it's also like heartwarming because it's all like confirming all these little theories we had. And we're like, oh man, we got that right. Oh hey, we were yeah. really we were really on point about that. Or oh my god, we had no fucking clue what the fuck that was. That sucks. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Uh, thanks Ashermir for 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 staying alive. And being the most wonderful scientific asshole I've ever known. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. Uh, anything else, Smith? That's it. All righty. Well, then from all of us Lord Daddies to all of you Guardians out there, we'll see you next time.